morning. Happy Monday. Welcome. I don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. Get out of bed, you old sack of sh- I can't this early. You got to wait. They'll get me. You're not allowed to say certain words within the first however many seconds of your broadcast. You got to pretend to be happy. Good morning. Good morning. Get out of bed. Tag a friend. We're going to have a fun one today. We're going to have a nice one today. We're going to have one where we yell at a where I lose it and have a meltdown at a chat uh, participant. Who's it going to be? It could be anybody. It could be anybody. We never know. Who wants to do the likes today? Hit the like button. And I'm so, so sorry. Look, I got some apologies to make. I got some explaining to do. And uh, we'll make it work. Okay, Wizard Nug seems to be uh, enjoying it. And so maybe Wizard Nug could be in charge of the likes today. Hit the like buttons for the old Wizard Nug. Okay? Okay. Anyway, good good morrow, good day, happy time. We're over on Rumble. Did you know about that? We do Rumble. We do Rumble. Oh, uh, who yelled at me? Who was yelling at me that they never get in charge of likes? Johnny Mars, the guy who's always on Rumble. Okay, Johnny Mars, are you here? You can be in charge of likes if you're here. With Wizard Nug. It'll be just even saying Wizard Nug and Johnny Mars uh, makes me feel like I'm um, Steel Toe. All right, $5 from Wizard Nug. <laughs> Johnny Mars says he's having a good time. Hey, will you follow us over on Rumble? We don't get many views on Rumble. We don't get many subscribers on Rumble. And we don't get many followers on Rumble. I also get a lot of teasing and hate. Look at all flimsy green Smith. Imagine being on Rumble and being in charge of likes. Okay. I mean, what are you you so grumpy about? Why can't we just have a guy in charge of likes also on Rumble? I don't know why we need to judge people about what portal they watch the program through and how they're going to manage um, tokens of admiration, like likes and stuff. Can we please just get along today? I'm trying to have a day. I might spend a lot of money today. I Did, did I tell you that, that I've landed on a Lexus now? I went from a Kia to a Toyota. I've looked at Volkswagens, I've looked at Hondas, and now I'm a Lexus guy and it doesn't feel right. I don't feel like I deserve a Lexus. You know, I'm not one of these rich, fancy people. And then uh, when I even get, when I even think about purchasing a Lexus, I'm like, ugh, am I really like a Lexus guy? Can I drive around in, in, in supple, leather and maybe I can but it doesn't feel like I should and don't worry not like a new Lexus I can't I can't be going down and buying like a fresh off the factory floor like I gotta go buy like a used I need to make sure it has it's all beat up Mr. Panhandler says Lexus is for gays why I didn't know that I didn't know and when I went to buy, when I went to look at it and test drive it the other day, um, uh, they didn't tell me, "Hey, be careful! This is for the gays." They didn't go, "Hey, watch out!" Um, Lexuses are gay. Hit, Wizard Nug says, "Hit like, like, like." And Stuttering John uh, fell for the Rick bit. Says Barrister, "I don't even know what you're talking about." 
I'm trying to make peace with Rick. I don't. The last thing I need is Rick going live. Excuse me. <laughs> My allergies have been through the roof. Is that a saying? Anyway, I've been sneezing all weekend. Uh, I wish Rick would leave me alone. I'm trying to cause a truth. Um, I'm trying to cause a truth. Proximus, how O-R-E are you? How or are you? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. How are you? Oh, how are you? How are you? Yeah, that is true. Again. Can I hit that? Again. Again. We're doing it. Hit the like button. Join up. Get a membership and tell your family about it. It's Nobody Likes Onions Monday morning. We're doing it. I'm here. We're having it. We're smelling it. And you can be part of it. Oh, my goodness gracious. Thank you so much uh, for being here. If you missed uh, Friday night, we do have a new Stuttering John uh, voice on the AI system. And we also have a a new character I can't quite put my finger on. Some people said it sounds like maybe one of Stuttering John's trans children. I can't really remember who that voice was modeled after. But either way, it sounds like a they... And you're going to love it. Pulper $85. So there must be a bug because Pulper 80 doesn't really uh, do $5. So this is not the real Pulper 80. Probably. We love you, Melton. Does that make us weird? Probably. It probably does. But as long as you love me $5 at a time, I'll take it. I, can you believe I, I might buy a Lexus today? I don't know. I just always grew up like... I figure like maybe when I was in my early 20s, I gave a fuck about cars. But do you really care about cars anymore? Look, I'm in Vegas. I need air conditioning and a good sound system for the old tunes. That's about all I really need. There's a reason I have a 14-year-old car now. I don't really, you know, I, I don't really a, go too many places. And I also don't... um you know, I don't think I deserve comfort. <laughs> is that is that a way? Is that a way to uh, talk about myself? Anyway, I see people asking about overdose. Stuff. I, I, the the two of the bonus shows last week, including the Chad Snipe show from the psychiatrist on Thursday, and our Friday night members only show. They are up on the overdose, and they're up on the full overdose only. At nobodylikesonions.com slash overdose. These will not be up. Both of these shows will not be up ever on Overdose Light. Sorry. I got a very angry email from uh, Aussie guy who I think is in Perth, Australia. And he was like, I quit the overdose because you were taking too long to get stuff up there. And it was faster on the Overdose Light. And now... There's shows that are only on the overdose that aren't on the overdose light. It's like, well, that's always been the case. I mean, overdose light is called light because it won't get everything. And overdose will get everything. So everything is on the overdose. But blame yourselves. You know, this was such heavy trans content <laughs> that I can't leave it up on the net. I can't leave it up on the net. Will that Lexus hold your massive ass? That's the thing. It's like, it's comfortable. It's nice. It's got the big captain's bucket seats up front. I feel like I'm in a cockpit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but it's uh, it's what I've decided on. I think it's what I'm pulling the trigger on. If we can make the numbers work. I don't, I hate these fucking car salesmen. Uh, Waver, thank you for the sticker. Stick string man, happy Monday, everyone. And Jay in Japan, Melt Dog, Stutcho's kid is actually a Zzer. Get it right. I live in Japan. I'll send you a box of cool Japanese stuff if you want. Yeah, please send stuff 
to our P.O. Box. We'd love to have your Japanese crap. And you can always email us stuff for our P.O. Box segment here on the program. Nobody likes onions. Care of Patrick Melton, 4948 Mountain Vista Street. P.O. Box 13932, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89121. That's 4948 Mountain Vista Street, number 13932. Las Vegas, Nevada, 89121. Go ahead and send in your stuff. Pulper's gift and a membership. That's great. And that means he's back on track, being weird as fuck, and communicating in a gift code. And there'll be some strange hashtags coming soon. I can only imagine. I'm getting really tired of all these trans jokes. John, seriously tell your daughter to cover her tits. They are in the dumpster behind Cedar Sinai in Los Angeles. And speaking of daddy's little thing, does she brush her teeth with cat piss? Tell the little mistake to invest in a teeth whitening system. Yeah, I think it was fucked up. Uh, stuttering John to, uh, oh, wow, Steve H. Wow, that's very nice. And Steve H, you are on the wall today right here. We are caught up on the old wall. Wall of flame. I like to call it. <laughs> Who's Steve H? I don't like these people who are ambiguous. I'm Steve H. Sounds made up. Sounds made up. But either way, yes, thank you. I do need Lexus money. You can, uh, everybody who donates $50 gets to sign a fender of my car. And also, you know, just just like, um, cause I've been saving up for a car for a while. Like, I know I've known I'm gonna need a new car. I just haven't been in any rush. And then, like, you know, just going and handing over all that money for a car, um, feels weird. Oh, and I finished The Sopranos this weekend, so thank you to uh, Flimsy Greenberg for recommending that I do watch The Sopranos. I It was fine. I guess it was better than most of the shit on today. Lance is happy uh, Monday, everybody. No homo. Yeah, I hope everybody's just ready for a week. I hope we're all locked in. I hope you... Uh, I hope you got your uh, dick sucked this weekend, your tits flicked. What are girls like? They like their tits flicked? What are you girls into? You like your bean clipped and your tits flicked? <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know. It's been too long um, since I was out there flicking beans and tickling clits. But if that's what you ladies like and it's what you're into, I'd be happy to do it. Oh, hey, Kevin Brennan. I, I First of all, do we have Chad tripping or what? Do we have Chad tripping or what? Chad, literally, I cannot believe this. It's almost like if you wrote a retarded character for your movie or TV show, you couldn't plan it so much. Chad is really, I'm not even kidding you. For the third time this year, talking about how bad my Legion of Skanks uh, appearance was and tagging Louis J. Gomez to tell me he literally is going tell Patrick how bad it was Lou and tagging Lewis that's really happening it's it's the third or fourth time this year that he's tried to tag red bar or tried to tag Lewis come on Lewis tell him out how bad he is it's like what the fuck it's literally like the third time. It's never worked. He's never responded to you. He's never answered you. He's not your, like, Chad, you're a fucking clown to everybody. Remember when you were going to, like, tour around and fly up to New York and do the Legion of Skanks podcast for your promo? Of your, it's like, I mean, what planet are we on? So he's literally, I, I mean, you couldn't write. I, I thought it was a joke when I saw it. I was like, why is this showing me old tweets? No, 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 no. Yesterday, he's reaching out to Louis J. Gomez like, Melton was so bad on Legion of Skanks. Tell him, Lewis. It's like, holy shit. We really do have this guy never not thinking about NLO. 
ever. And you might say, Patrick, uh, you know, you, Chad's living rent free in your head. Uh, then sure. I mean, whatever you, whatever you think, man. Yeah, we're all obsessed with Chad. We're all jealous of Chad. We wish we could be like Chad. We wish we had talent like Chad. We wish we could be funny like Chad. Yes. Whatever you need to tell yourself, I'll agree with and co-sign. I'm done fighting people's perceptions of whatever. Kevin, Kevin's like, Mountain's over there saying that Keith and the girl's way bigger than my show. Sure, Kevin, that's what I said. Are you dumb, you old fuck? You know, what's wrong with everybody? That's not what I said, but, but I'm done fighting you. Bring me your permission slip. Bring me your paper with whatever written down that you think I said. I'll sign it all. I, I'm done fighting you idiots. Whatever makes you sleep better at night. You old fuck. Kevin's over there. You heard Pat. I mean, I haven't even watched the whole show from Saturday night, but I caught that part. Kevin's over there going like Melton saying that Keith and the girl is a way bigger show than me and yada, yada, yada. And, and even uh, Pat Dixon's like, well, he did. That doesn't sound like Melton. It's like, yeah. Cause that, cause I didn't say that. What I said was Keith and the girl was bigger than, than Kevin Brennan's podcast will ever be. That's a fact. Nobody likes onions was way bigger than Kevin Brennan's podcast will ever be. That's a fact. So Ke Kevin's over there. Like, you know, he doesn't, he can't wrap his head around history and timelines. He's like, hold on mountain. So your show used to be way bigger. And what happened? It's like, yes, it did. Yes, it did. <laughs> I mean, it used to be over 10 times, but yes, it did. Yes. Correct. And, and then what happened? It, it Now it's not. You know, I don't know what to tell you. Now it ain't. Keith and the girl is nothing anymore. Keith and the girl is garbage. No one watches Keith and the girl. So no, Melton did not say that that <laughs> Keith and the girl is way bigger than your podcast, Kevin. Melton said Keith and the girl was way bigger than your show. Well, Keith and the girl, and nobody likes onions for that matter, reached heights of podcast popularity that your show will never reach. That is a fact. Kevin Brennan's podcast will never be some mainstream huge phenomena. And back in the day in early podcasting, you know, well, we were, we were Keith and the girl was too. Very, 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 very big shows. I, I don't think they're bigger than you now, Kevin. No, I don't. No one watches that show. It's complete garbage. So I don't know what everybody gets out of like running off to their show being like, Melton says Keith and the girl's way bigger than us. It's like, no, he doesn't. Imagine people wanting to trust eyewitness testimony or hearsay, you know, like, no, I heard him say this. It's like people don't, people think they hear people say shit all the time. People are a hundred percent convinced and confident. Like, no, Melton said Keith and the girl's bigger than no, I didn't. And then I also, you know, everybody who was here uh, Friday night, we had a great time. We got loose, drunk, high, and Kevin Brennan hated it. Kevin Brennan hated the show Friday night. And Carl put out a clip. I guess we're famous now. We went WATP. Uh, we blew up. We're WATP famous now. Pulper gets it. We should all be done uh, with the fighting. Hashtag love. No, but, uh, you know, it's just a different style. I'm not going to sit over here. First of all, Carl does a different style where he's like, you know, pulled clips and he's meticulous and going to talk about specific instances of stuff and still doesn't do a good job of explaining it. There's a 30 minute clip about how, how, uh, John Melendez is getting trolled about Rick and stuff, but like, they never really kind of like explain what's going on or who Rick is or what the troll is. So, uh, you know, even when you're punched up and concise and have your show planned out to a T, it's not like you, sometimes it's not even like you do a better job of, of explaining anything. Wizard Nug, five gifted memberships. Holy shit, I'm going to make my nut. I could get close to a nut here today. <laughs> we could get close to a nut here today. Uh, Steel Toe Morning Show is up and running. They've got $225. I don't know what they're talking about. Let's see. The husband of, of Chrissy. Oh, no. And he, he calls to inform me that there has been a family emergency. 
uh, and Chrissy cannot do the show Saturday night. She has to go to uh, back to New York immediately. She has to uh, catch a flight back in the morning. Uh, April obviously uh, drove her to the airport and everything. And Chrissy can't do the show Saturday. And I uh, that I mean that sends the both of us into full fledged like what are, we, what are we gonna do? Night about, before, yeah. not a problem. Night, uh, night before. For people who don't know, uh, Saturday night, Aaron and April are pr- pr- uh, promoting and putting on uh, Chrissy Mayer Comedy Night in Backwoods, Minnesota. So they, st- I guess they were going to lose a lot of money because Chrissy like had to leave day of. My biggest thing was a Jason and I at Partners Pub. He's about to tell you how how they saved the day and everybody loved it and they didn't have to refund any money and they they still made their nut. <laughs> Some of them ungodly distances uh, to watch this show. Uh, Riley Dick Masterson's producer was there and by the way, I, I don't know how much time you spent with Riley or talked to Riley at all. He's a fucking animal. I love that guy. I got to hang out with him just a little bit. Um, everybody kept getting really distracted by his Power Rangers jacket. It was a cool jacket. Which apparently he made himself or something. But he... Um, cool, cool, cool. He kind of like a, He kind of gave me Corey Adam vibes, like a less gruff Corey Adam. He's just very playful and yeah. very like uh, outgoing and everything else. He's a cool dude. He was really fun. I really liked uh, uh, Riley. Nobody who made their own Power Rangers jacket was a cool dude. I'm sorry. I'm going to put my foot down here, Vito. Uh, before the show, that uh, they officially want to get me involved. Oh, uh, in the Ripaverse Eric July thing. I hate to let everyone down. Uh, while Riley may have come to get me involved, uh, along with Nick Ricado with the Eric July Ripaverse thing, mm-hmm. I st- I stood strong on Saturday. I did not get involved. Oh, okay. not once. Still, now Aaron would have you believe they're trying to be a mainstream show and they're leaving behind all this niche drama garbage. I don't have a clue. I want to make this clear. I don't have a clue what the Ripaverse is or who any of these people he's talking about are. And neither do you, by the way, because he's not going to explain it. Again, you know, all these guys claim to be pros, and they hate the way Melton goes on and on and on. But you know what Melton does at least? He kind of covers all of it. He kind of covers everything. This isn't a show for high-strung, busy dads. This is a show for you to put on and relax about it. You know what I mean? We uh we did a thing. Oh boy. Where we so so we scrambled. We had all of this you know this stuff planned and it all went out the window. You know. Where do I show you pictures from this event? We had Lila. We had me. We had you. We had Nick. Like we had a, a deep bench. Yeah. As it were. And we didn't know how good Nick was gonna be. We didn't. We had no idea. It was his first time, and that was kind of the linchpin to the whole thing. Like Nick. Going way over his time and killing and the room. So again, Chrissy Mayer, the pro comic, couldn't make it, so they had this Nick Ricada from Ricada Law go up and talk, and they had a midget go up and talk, and they had Johnny Crutches and of course Steel Toe Aaron go up and talk. And Steel Toe, wait till wait till I show you the photos. You think this crossing the arms thing is self soothing, insecure? Where do you see this guy on stage? Okay. Uh, I, I left, I le- I went downstairs and I told April, I go, because she had worked it out where she was going to take Chrissy to the airport very early in the morning. And so I told April, I go, you get some sleep. I'll figure out the rest. First person I call is Gino Bisconti. I just called Gino. I said, look, buddy, I want to offer this to you first. Give you a chance to say no. Ugh. At least I know I called you. We could Gino, try- do you want to fly out last minute and perform in, in, uh, and Gino was no thanks, loser. Carolina uh, football, of course, on Sunday. He wants to watch all day. Gino was not in the mood to get get on a plane and right. fly up and do a show and then go. in the mood, or he didn't have enough money and you didn't have enough money. You're you're, you're making April wake up at three a.m. to drive Chrissy to the airport. Y'all don't got no money. You know, any other person's like get an Uber for thirty bucks. You guys are like, April better wake up and drive her. Guy, that's not going to keep them there. Right. And credit to the fans. Credit to the people who bought tickets because with walk They let us keep all the money and not keep any of the promises. So thank you, fans, for agreeing to get screwed over by Steel Toe 
Once again, par for the course. That, I, and I'll be honest with you. I don't know where Jason was planning on putting that 25 people. Yeah, it did, we didn't seem like we lost anybody. The room felt full when we did the show. And we did. We lost. We lo- And we 25 is a considerable amount of people. We did lose people because Chrissy wasn't going to make it. And I think if Lila and Nick weren't going to be there, um, kind of in that same universe as Chrissy, mm-hmm. if they would have lost one more. So hold on, they're admitting that they didn't fill the room and they lost a bunch of people because Chrissy wasn't going to be there. Yet Steel Toe tweeted a photo, I'll show you, that Nick Ricre- Nick Ricada, again, who's a lawyer you've never heard of and don't know, just a, just a, another Minnesota YouTube loser. And... Um, and uh, Leela Hart or Lila Hart, who I have no idea who it is. I guess some midge comic, some minority midge comic. They were. He tweeted like, "These two can fill a room." It's like, hold on, you just said you lost people when Chrissy wasn't going to be there, so you lied. You're lying. I mean, is there anything this guy ever tells the truth about? Exactly, like hippos in more ways than three. So we go to a Benton Station. We have a great time. Uh, then in the morning. Uh, Nick Ricada and his wife came over. We watched uh, Wolf of Wall Street and had some Casey's breakfast pizza uh, before they left town. Uh, we hung out with Lila for lunch. And Nick Ricada and his wife came over and we had some breakfast pizza and watched a movie? Like, what in the fuck? At one uh, thirty in the morning. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> to go to the airport. Lila picked some weird flights. So she's dead up there right now. Yeah, I mean, she's out. I mean, Lila, let's see. If she left at 5, so yeah, she's still in the air. She's asleep in midair right now. But it was, I mean, the whole weekend was. This is the third time Aaron has told us that one of his friends is on a plane. He loves tracking, like, his friends flying. Like, yeah, so she just got on a plane. She's in the air right now. That's cool. That's cool. He loves telling you like people are on planes. Like it's rare. Like, oh, they're on a big boy plane right now, actually. Our friend of ours is actually on a plane up in the sky. A friend of ours is in the sky up on a plane. Oh. He's fine. That part's Nobody all Nobody puts baby in a corner. Exactly. Or a coma. None. Uh, thank you very much to Balls Deep for gifting a membership. Appreciate that, bud. Very nice of you. Very cool. Uh Cheetos from Stoney says, so did Andrea Jefferson take her spot? Oh, man, I was thinking about, I was thinking about uh, Listen to calling this. Corey. Listen to I this. I was thinking about calling Craig Allen. Who? I was thinking about doing uh, calling um, Corey. Max Weirs. Yeah, Max Weirs. I actually, for a brief moment, told uh, April, I go, I wonder if Adrian would come out and, and do the thing. I'm glad we didn't call anybody. I'm glad we didn't offer it to anyone else because it went incredibly well. This way we didn't have to pay anybody additional to headline. Everybody let us keep the money. So we really got to screw everybody over. They didn't get to see the headliner they paid for, but we did march up a lawyer with no entertainment experience and a midget to look weird with her stubby brown little tits. So we got to keep all the money. Steel Toe's doing great. Johnny Crutches got paid 50 bucks as usual, and Daddy Aaron went up and crushed. It's like, let, let's recap what happened. For months, they've teased the Chrissy Mayer comedy show. They made they sold 50 tickets, and, the, and Chrissy Mayer didn't come, and, and they basically didn't hire a new comic to take her place and just fudged it and kept the money. That is what happened. That is exactly what happened, okay? I'm glad we didn't call anybody to fill in for her. You just heard him say that. I thought maybe we'd fly Corey up from Texas. They're so desperate for a comedy show, and Minnesota's so devoid of talent, they're like flying in Chrissy Mayer. And when Chrissy Mayer canceled, uh, Aaron didn't know what to do other than reach all the way across the country to see if Gino could come. And then he thought about flying Corey up from Texas. There, so there's no comics within a 500,000 mile radius of Minnesota. You, you have to literally reach across the country to think of a guy. And then at the end of the day, he's glad he didn't because that would have cost him money. And you guys didn't care anyway because you're used to Steel Toe ripping you off and not giving you what you promised. Cool, 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 cool. Patrick, I'm so disappointed in you. You should be utterly ashamed of yourself for your unbecoming behavior. Drinking alcohol and smoking marijuana is so unprofessional. 
This abhorrent behaviour is what I've come to expect from low IQ, white Ugh. trash heathens such as the Catalanos. Ugh. Not from you. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Oh, Kevin was so disappointed. Kevin was so mad. Hit the like button, cowards. He was like, uh, you know, Mel, that was embarrassing. Mel got obliterated. It's like, old man, I, you know, I'm done fighting with you, old man. Stop watching, you old fuck. You don't get it. You can't keep up with me. You're not stopping me from drinking and smoking on a Friday night. You're not stopping me from having a good time. You're sure not going to convince me it wasn't fun. I had a great time. I had a fun time. I got absolutely obliterated out of my mind. We laughed and laughed and laughed. It was great. It's on the overdose now. Eat my ass. No one's embarrassed. No one. We loved it. We loved it. So shut the fuck up, old man. He kept pausing it. Then he didn't pause it enough. You're an old idiot. We're not interested in making Kevin Brennan like the show. The minute I dial this show in to where Kevin Brennan's happy with it, I'll fucking take an ice pick and shove it under my rods and cones. Get fucked, old man. You know, I, I don't know what, what it is with you that you, you're like, it's Friday night. I wanted to sit back with a drink and watch a show. I just wanted it to be paced exactly how I wanted it to be. That's not what we're doing, you old fuck. Do your own show. Do your own show. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. I didn't hurt you. Get over it. <laughs> Don't fall for his shit, Uncle Mel. I'm not, but, you know, like, you got to stop it, you old fuck. You, you are not tuned into shit. You are very, very, very out of it. You cannot follow trains of thought. I'm high and and drunk as fuck and and sharper than you. How are you not following stuff? You know? I'll be damned. I'll be damned. So anyway, find out where Kevin lives. We're burning down his whole fucking family. And uh, get over it. Get over it. And bring it back. And I don't know if Ian Hawk's here. We got more business to cover. Just internal. You know, I got this email the other day. Um, or I know Sir Vosef might be around. I got an email the other day. It says, this is Gorm. Now we've seen Gorm around somewhere in the chat or the... This is Gorm. Ian Hawk kicked me out of Spurgville. Kicked me to Spurgville for no good reason. I opted to leave the Discord outright. Wish you and the show all the best. Okay. First of all, again, very gay email for a man to send another man. I left completely. I wish you the best. Don't email me this anymore. Just quit, you losers. Just quit. I wish it didn't have to be this way. Remember when Beloved Chatter was like, we brought Ian back and tried the Discord, and Beloved Chatter's like, well, I'm going to take my overdose subscription and shut. Like, first of all, first of all, he didn't email me and, like, throw a, throw a Spurgville fit. So, right away, he didn't make it my problem. He just quietly protested. But I replied to this Gorm guy. I went through the logs. We checked it out. I talked to Ian. Ian said he was making death threats and spurging out, and he got sent to Spurgville. And then I go, look, and there's the only guy who got really, like, kicked out in recent times was this guy named Horses. Um, I didn't cancel overdose, just quit. Yeah, yeah, beloved chatter, that was a bad example because you didn't throw a little, a little bitch tantrum. And you're still around, so look, we're doing it. Um, so I go over there and look. And this guy, Horses, was kind of acting like a horse's ass. Now, I talked to Ian about it. It wasn't a big deal, you know. And Ian reinstated him. And then I get an email from Gorm saying, uh, oh, I'm back. He put me back in. I'm good. And I had already asked him, what's your username? Because I wanted to find out if it was this Horses guy who was acting like an idiot. Because, look, if you're acting like an idiot, you probably deserve a little bit of what you're getting over there. And then he didn't reply. He just wrote back, okay, he let me back in. I'm all good. And I go, you didn't answer my question. What's your username? 
And then he just goes radio silent on me. So when when you needed something and you wanted to bitch about Ian, you shot me an email. I asked for your username to help you out in this situation. You didn't reply. I talked to Ian. Ian undoes your ban. And then you send me an email to let me know that you're unbanned. Yay. But still don't answer my question. And then I reply back, answer my question. What's your username? On the Discord. And you still don't answer? Hey, Ian. Hey, Sir Vosef. Ban that horses guy again. And and not, um, not like to Spurgville. Ban him from our server until this guy answers me. That's got to be who it is. Ban him. Ban him from our server. You wanted to email me and get help. I dig into it. It turns out you're being a little bit of an asshole too, but you want to get Ian Hawk in trouble. You're banned now until you fucking answer me. How about that? How about that? Not even Spurgville. Banned from our server, whoever Gorm is. So I don't know if Ian's hearing this. I don't know if Sir Vosef is hearing this. Find that guy and ban him from our server. And uh, yeah, I'll be looking forward to your email where you suck me off again and go, hey, I think there must be a problem. I can't access the server. There's not a problem. There's not a problem. Gorm is horses. I don't know, but that's the only guy who had gotten banned when this guy started complaining. So we're going to re-ban him again and see if he squirms. I, I've had enough of adults trying to use me to, to win petty little battles with other adults. So now I'm gonna uh, now I'm gonna exercise my complete dickishness to uh, get you. What is he coping about now? Well, that's the thing. You see, the money ain't coming from me. It's coming from her dad. Yeah, he's he's a wealthy guy. He's uh -oh. really well off. All right, uh -oh. guys. Let's go into our first story today. <laughs> hey, uh... You know, I'm kind of a sucker for school board stories. Okay. Like when there's a controversy at a school board or a controversy at a small town city council meeting where people are just remarkably bent out of shape over what people in bigger towns would consider a very mild problem. And everybody knows everybody. So there's history with everything. Right. I love Aaron trying to tell you about, you know what I love uh, when there's a small town? So it's like, bitch, your whole life is small town. Your whole life is small towns. So Aaron trying to act like he, you know what I love when these small towns have a school board thing? <laughs> it wouldn't be a big deal in a big normal city. It's like, teach us about the big normal city, please. Please, Daddy Aaron, teach us about the big normal city. Uh, KB doesn't like you talking about the Discord. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, hello. Dude, real fast, I've done some shows with that girl, Lila. And she's shorter than a parking meter, but she has B cups. So if you equate it out to regular size, she's got like double Ds. And then you know me, bro. I love the big flappa jackies. <laughs> That's all. I'll take your answer off the air. First time, long time. Okay. Okay, this Ian's Hawk marriage guy, you've this bit is getting very, very tired. Um, and look, we put up with it when you were trying to be, when you were pretending to be Ian Hawk's marriage, but now you're trying to pretend to be Ian Hawk, which does technically start fucking with a rule where we say you can't try to pretend to be someone else. So also, you're not as good at I I know who you are. You're probably like a guy who's like thinking about becoming a guy and you're flirting with this new character you've created, Ian Hawk's marriage. We get it. And look, it's very, very funny. You're very, very creative. The bit is played out. The bit is played the fuck out. We get it. Ian Hawk, Dirty Dalish. It was very, very funny. It was very, very funny. Um, Patrick White knighting for Ian now? Yeah, I don't even like know Ian, but we're, I told you it was played out. I've asked you to stop, and now you're going to burn it and, and blow it up. Cool, cool, cool. And bye, bye. Watch us all care about it so much. We'll never think about you again. We'll never think about you again. That's how good the bit was. The bit was so good, we'll never 
think about it again after today. So really, really strong, strong stuff. I'm all for a bit. You know, sometimes where they had like the ghost of my dead mom or like uh, Patrick's pork. And I love a personified emotion or you know, Ian Hawk's divorce. Nobody's mad at that character or whatever. It's like you got to do, you do have to like do something with it. You can't just keep repeating the same thing over and over again. We go like, yeah, we've had enough of it. We've had enough of it. And when I start talking to Ian Hawk, and then you want to go like, uh, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. It's like we've, we've seen it. We've seen you type it 30 times. How needy is everybody? How needy? I'm, I'm thankful for people like Paul Parady who lay low. DK here with 10 gifted memberships, Jesus Christ. You know, you're going to make me reach my nut. On a Monday morning, you're going to help me reach my nut, you guys. Jesus Christ. Uh, Justin Kemble, already been a member for six months after you gave me a free membership for canceling my subscription to sit down Zoomock. Thanks. Oh, I forgot I did that. Paul Parady says, Melton makes me laugh a lot. The end. That's mean. No, that's nice. Sorry, I can't even keep up with what's mean and what's nice anymore. It's all running together. People want the bubble guts? Okay. The bubble guts. The bubble guts. The bubble guts. The real John Doe member for six months says, pay attention to me, daddy. Notice me, senpai. Notice me. Uh, yeah, I will. I'll pay so much. I'll pay attention to you real good. I'll pay attention to you so fucking sweet and slow. Your dad will uh, be writing to me about it. Anyway, thank you for being a member to everybody. Thanks to DK and Wizard Nog and Pulper for gifting memberships. It means so much. Because for, for every fan that, uh, you know, um, acts like cool and normal, like there is just... So, so many people who have no idea how to behave in uh, social situations. Here's one of them. And I can't even believe we're going back to this. Um, this disgracey chick has not been able to move the fuck on. Let me make this clear. I still don't know what happened. I, I think it was the Friday that we did the Waffle House uh uh, Paul drop Mark training video. What a great show. Everybody left in a good mood that day. Everybody was having a good time. Everybody was, was living their best life and everybody la you know, walked out lolling and lolling and lolling and lolling. And then I start getting a million comments over on the old, uh, YouTube from Disgracy, who, you know, well, we had seen her around before. She was an active member of the community. And she starts going off on TIFF and some other members of our community. I don't even know what about yelling about her autistic son. And why does she have to defend her, her autistic son to the chat? And the autistic son is... He's never eaten paste, and how could people ever say he ate paste? And, you know, it's the same thing I have to tell Joey C, but, you know, you can't. Joey C's so dumb and thick, you can't get anything into, you know, his head. Radish just says, her again, please. Again. Yeah, her again. And, um, you know, I don't even know what happened. I wasn't in the chat. I wasn't involved in it. I didn't have any uh, dog in the fight. I, I, we certainly weren't talking about her autistic kid or eating paste or any of this shit. So I don't know what happened, but I guess Tiff, you know, she's a big mean bitch. And she was screaming at this woman or making her feel like shit or telling her her kid eats paste or, 
you know our chat the minute you tell us like your your dead kid can't afford an urn and you have a dead kid we're all gonna be like show us that dead kid can i get a toe you know we're all gonna be hugely inappropriate and I had no problem with that. I don't know what was going on. And then she started like waving around this money. Like, oh, you know, I was going to get $180,000 in a divorce settlement. Imagine a woman like this getting divorced. <laughs> and then uh, you were going to, I was going to help you out. I love the show. I was going to give you some money. But because Tiff or somebody in your chat made fun of my son who definitely doesn't eat paste. I'm not going to support your show anymore, and fuck you, Patrick. So, again, I wasn't even involved in the conversation, and she's taking away this dangling carrot of reward money or something. Tiff is in the chat. She says, Disgrace, he came into the Shuley Network chat complaining about the mean onions. I told her to take her fight back to NLO. Look, I don't even know what it's about. I don't even know. I, I don't know anything about her kid or your kid or whoever's kid or paste or whatever. But the minute somebody starts telling me that I've lost a prize that I was going to win because my chat, like, I used to like you. I used to think your show was funny, but when you said my kid eats paste, and I was like, I didn't say your kid eats paste. And she's like, no, not you. It was something going on in the chat that you weren't aware of. Right. So why am I getting punished again and brought into it? Oh, because you're mentally disabled, disgracey. Maybe your son's not eating paste. Maybe you're eating paste. Maybe you're the paste-eating dumb, 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 dumb bitch, you dumb bitch. Are you gobbling paste, you stupid slore? You know, for everyone out there who's like, I was going to send you 10 grand, but someone you don't know said something about someone they don't know. So now I'm taking my money and never listening again and not being a fan. It's like... No one gives a fuck. Take your divorce settlement and buy a new brain, you old cow. Buy your son a lifetime supply of pallets of paste for all I give a shit, you stupid bitch. I don't know what you're talking about, and I never had your money. So it's not a threat to me to be like, I'm not giving you the money you didn't know about because you didn't defend my son during a fight where you didn't know he was being attacked. It's like, no shit, you old dirty dumb bitch. No shit. David Chandler, 10 gifted memberships. What is your button stuck this morning, Chandler? We're trying to empty it out. 10 gifted members. And by the way, oh, uh, somebody did. Thank you, David uh, Chandler. Somebody did uh, message me the other day, and they showed me on that on iPhone. Yeah, it's charging people $7 to gift a membership. And I was telling them, like, I can't find anywhere in the options or the settings to, like, control that. And he was like, yeah, you can't. It's Apple. It's uh, Google. So I don't even, like, I have no control over that. I apologize for it. It's so dumb. It's bad enough with a $5 membership. I get $3 of it or whatever. But now they're charging you $7 for a gifted membership, and I get $3 of it. It's like, what are we even fucking doing? Apple gets two, Google gets two, and I get three. This is the split. How is this world sustainable? Anyway, hit the like button, you idiots, and uh, keep giving me money because that's the only way I'm going to afford a Lexus. I'll let you know that. Do you have a Lexus, David Chandler? What do you drive? You're like the richest guy we know. Do I deserve a Lexus? It feels wrong. It feels wrong. But I want to find out what David Chandler, because like if David Chandler drives a Lexus, then I definitely don't deserve a Lexus. But if David Chandler's like, I actually have a Rolls Royce and a driver, then I'll go like, okay, well, maybe I can drive my own Lexus. That's probably my own level. But I don't know. I don't know. Did we reach the goal yet? Oh, are we, are we trying to race uh, Steel Toe today? <laughs> I usually don't try to race Steel Toe until they have their, uh, just just during their uh, scramble. But they do they do need two hundred twenty five dollars today, and they haven't ra uh, gotten any of it apparently. Uh, oh God! You hear me burping? The Lexus NX? No, 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 no! It's too small. It's too small. We're going RX. We're going RX. We're going big. 
I won't be driving any NXs or UXs around, okay? Life's too short. Get the Lexus. Steve Curran drives a Lexus. Ugh, yeah, but how old is it? It's probably like an old ass uh, Lexus. Chandler teleports. What if Chandler does take the bus? What if he's like, <laughs> what if he, what if this is all on credit and he is broke? And then we get a call from like the credit card company and they're like, he's actually been running up cards for years. He's like, he's basically like, uh, like, uh, Frank, what's his name and catch me if you can. Where you going tonight, Chandler? Somewhere exotic. <laughs> Uh, Steve C, who is way poorer than Steve H. Fun fact, uh, Disgracey's kid doesn't have autism. Disgracey is actually homeless. She's been feeding her, uh, feeding stray rats and cats. She thinks they're her kids. Is that true? So anyway, look what this crazy bitch has been up to. So she said she was never going to listen to the show again. She said she was going to leave the show. She said, fuck you, Patrick. I'm glad I found out you suck. Well, you go over here to Rumble. I don't know what she thinks. Like, I won't watch the show on uh, Abignail. Yes. Thank you, Stevie Lou. Um, so you go over to Rumble. I, I guess she thinks, this crazy thinks, like, if she doesn't watch on YouTube anymore, she's not going to help us with the algorithm. Where's my browser topper? Come on. Let's get pro. Okay, so if you scroll down to this October 12th show, you got some comments. And there's only two, but they're both from Disgracey. Boop. I think it's very interesting that you and your chat are still talking about me. I love the attention, but what you don't understand because you have no children is that a mother will scratch someone's eyes out to defend her child. I'll do it over again in a second. It's like, no, you won't, you stupid bitch. This is the internet. You're not scratching anyone's eyes out. We don't know you. You ain't real, bitch. This isn't real. You're not scratching anyone's eyes out to defend your child. No one's attacking your child. We don't know your dumb autistic boy. This is like, like Joey seeing Christina sees with her dead daughter. It's like. Why does every why do you think everyone in the world has to re, have the same deference and respect for your dead kid or your injured kid or your retarded kid or your autistic kid? We don't give a shit. I have my own problems. I'm trying to decide whether or not I deserve a Lexus. I can't worry about your lead paint eaten boy. I can't worry about your paste eaten pissed himself kid. No one gives a fuck about your boy. I'm trying to get money for a car. <laughs> You're worried about your boy? You think we care that your boy eats paste? Guess what? He do or he don't. Nothing we do is going to make him stop eating paste or start eating paste. You dumb bitch. What you don't understand because you'll never have children. I love that one too. The whole like. You don't understand because you don't have kids. When I do have kids, I won't act retarded. When I do have kids, nothing anyone says in an internet chat room full of people who don't know me is going to change whether or not my kid eats paste. I think your boy eats glue, to be clear, Disgracy. I think your boy puts a nipple over the paste bottle and gugga lugga gugga lugga gugga lugga gugga lugga drinks it. <laughs> I mean, I think he does. I think he does, based on how you react. I mean, I, 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 if you told me, like, oh, Melton, your kid eats paste, I'd be like, oh, you know, like, who cares? Melton, your wife guzzles cock. Your Melton, your wife gets drilled out by several men. Okay. Melton said this. Sure. Sure he did. Sure he did. Whatever you need, pal. Serial killer. Here's another $5 to pay off the 180K I stole from you. Disgracey's 180K. Who would have thought such a paste comment would bring me such joy? I mean, I don't even understand what happened. Do you understand, do you understand how dumb it is to like 
threaten to take away money from me that that's not even real. Your hundred eighty thousand divorce settlement. I'm sure you were really gonna like split that with NLO, you dumb bitch. And by the way, don't even come back unless you're gonna give me twenty k of it, because that's the apology fee. <laughs> I was gonna. I was about to get a big settlement. I was about to get a big windfall, and NLO was my favorite, and I was gonna give you some. But then someone you don't know about said something to me that I don't like, so now you're not getting any of the money. What? Fuck you, you dumb bitch. Pound pound sand. Threatening me with money I don't. About your paste-eating kid. Your kid eats. There's no way your kid don't eat glue. Why would you be so upset? The ghost of Mr. P wishes he sold Savvy that hot dose. I'm going to fight her. Uh, tarred mistake tonight. You call her son a uh, mistake? So again, you'll never understand because you're not a mother, but I'll scratch someone's eyes, eyes out to defend my child. Against what? Again, just, just random internet chat words that had nothing to do with anything. Not a bot in the chat says no reason to bring up your autistic child in a chat room or your dying dog for that matter. It's attention seeking behavior. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Arizona Mesa Tom makes a great point. Hit the like button. We got over 413 of you watching right now. Why don't you hit that like button and make it snappy? Disgrace. He continues. And this is another like uh, warning shot from a retard. They can't stop commenting. You know, they never get it out in one shot. They have to comment and then they'll think about it some more. And another thing, they'll think about it some more. And another comment. One more thing, just because you're hopelessly stupid. Hold on, I thought it was your favorite show. I thought it was your funniest show. You were going to give me money. Casey makes the wee sound because he's imitating Jackie, the joke man, Martling, from the Stern Show. Also, the song that loops for several minutes was made by a listener of the Stern Show as a goof. It appears that Casey thinks it's automatically supposed to give him some clout. I'm not proud that I know this information. just thought I'd clue you in. So this is after yelling at me that I don't know anything about kids. And um, that you'll scratch my eyes out and that I'm hopelessly stupid. Wizard Nug 2 makes a great point. Maybe he's not her number one. He's not her number one, son. <laughs> Holy shit. He's not her number one, son. That could be true. That could be true. I wish it ended here. Cut a couple days later on the 16th. Look at all the comments. <laughs> and it's all disgracey. Jeez, Pat, I must have really burnt your ass. Again, you haven't. You're miscalibrated. We don't know who you are. I don't know why you're mad or who the fuck you are. Uh, it's This is all just entertaining to me. I, I see these notifications for these comments. You're the only one commenting. I love nutty fans. So we're in. You didn't burn anybody's ass. We don't know who you are, bitch. We don't know about your son. The only thing we know about your son is he guzzles paste and has an overprotective mother. Those are the two things we know about your boy. Okay? Humble brag. Humble brag. This is all we know about your kid. I must have really burnt your ass. Don't you think it's time to move on and get a life? LOL. Your career will end soon if you keep talking about a defenseless woman who spent 25 years raising a disabled child. So now we find out that this is not even a child. We're, we're dealing with a 25-year-old, full-fledged, pinata-brained waterhead here. We're dealing with a full-on adult boy walking around full of... Saltwater taffy in his skull. Enough with the, my boy, my child. Same thing with Joey C. Same thing with Stuttering John. They're all like, my boy, my child, my kids, my children. You'll, you don't know what it's like to be a mother. So now you have a, a 25. There's nothing sadder than an out-of-control, spastic, 25 year old man child wandering around your home you have to keep razors locked away from him 
You have to, you know, I imagine he's got insulin shots you have to do every hour. He's probably like one of these, uh, he's so fucking low functioning that he constantly growing hair, you know, sporadically on his face and you have to shave him. Do you have to hold down your 25 year old boy and shave him? Ew. Ew. No wonder you have to keep him out of the pace. If I had a 25 year old and you were like, I bet your 25 year old eats paste. I'd be like, no, they're 25. But if I have a 25 year old and you're like, I bet your 25 year old eats paste. And I go, he never eat it pasted. He never eat it pasted. Fuck you. I was about to get a lot of money. You're not getting it. He never eat it pasted. I would carve your eyes out for my boy. He never eat it pasted. You'd be like, You sure that boy ain't eaten pasted? I think he eaten pasted. I'm pretty sure he possibly eaten pasted. <laughs> oh shit! It's like if you told me my dog constantly likes peanut butter off my nuts, I'd be like, uh, no. I wouldn't be like, no, he doesn't. No, my dog doesn't eat peanut butter. Off. Your dog eats peanut butter off your nuts. This show's over. And then I shut down the podcast and never come back. You'd be like, I think his dog ate peanut butter off his nut. I don't want to speak too soon, but, you know, I think his dog probably did that. Um, What is it you really want? Again, nothing. I didn't know you existed. I don't know who you are. What is it you want from disgracey, Melton? I mean, nothing, nothing. I'd love these comments to stop, and then we'll all just move on into oblivion. You're the one who's hurt, you understand? You know you've made a mistake, and you don't know how to come back and say you're sorry. You know I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know your boy. I never attacked your boy. I never said he eated pasted. I, to this day, I have no clue what happened to you and why you're spurging out. And you're over here in my chat going, what do you want, Melton? When will this end? What is it you really want? It's like, I don't, I, I, nothing really. Um, other, other, this is hilarious. This is great. What is it you really want? And all I really want. Would you like to come to Massachusetts and kill me? Listen to this. Listen to how weird this gets. What is it you really want? Do you want to come to Massachusetts and kill me? My life's not worth living anymore. So I invite you to come to Massachusetts. <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, this is. First of all, am I going to get some money to do this? I invite you to come to my house and murder me when I least expect it. You'll be doing me a huge favor. All because I made a truthful statement about how I used to think you were a good guy. But you and your chat are nothing but bullies. and Therefore, I cease to donate to you. It's my choice. And whether you like it or not, again, pick an enemy and, and, and fight them much. I don't know who you are. I don't give a fuck about your money. I, I, I like, you're like, oh, you just mad because I won't give you any of my money and I stuck up for my boy. It's like, I'm not mad. A, I'm not mad. And B, I don't know who the fuck you are. You just said you want me to sneak into your house and kill you when you least expect it. <laughs> Why? And by the way, am I going to get any of that money, you know, when that happens? I better. I better. I'm definitely not sneaking in and killing you when you least expect it for free. All because I made a truthful statement about how I used to think you were a good guy. But you and your chat are nothing but bullies. And therefore, I cease to donate to you. It's my choice. Like, we're all over here going, it's not your choice. You have to give. If you, if you don't give, it goes away. <laughs> Calico cut pants. Um, 
Whether you like it or not, I was coming into my divorce settlement and I was going to donate a lump sum. You are my favorite podcaster. You're nothing but an immature disgrace. Ha 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 ha. Get it? It's like, I don't know if this is a troll or a, or a woman. Do you understand? That's how wild this is. It feels like a troll. Like, I was going to give you money, but now I'm not going to give you money. How do you like it? How do you like losing all that money that you didn't have ever? Hello? Com. Uh-oh. What? What is it? Ah, oh, something.com. Oh, man, your prank didn't work. Here we go. She goes on further. One more thing. I never asked you to change. All I wanted to do was express my deep disappointment with the attitude of your chat. No one cares, you dumb bitch. No one cares. It's been weeks. Get over it. Go buy a Lexus. Did you expect me to keep listening while your chat kept being assholes to me? I didn't expect shit, you dumb bitch. I don't know what happened. I wasn't paying attention. I don't expect anything out of disgracey because I don't know you or have a relationship with you. You stupid whore. Did you expect me to just sit there in your chat while people talked about my daughter? No, no, I don't know your daughter. I don't know you, you stupid bitch. I don't expect anything out of any of you. It, it's, it's the internet. I should hope not. I have much better things to do than to stick around and get shit on for four hours a day. Even though she's in the chat every day. Even though she's leaving these comments over and over and over again on every show. Multiple comments. I mean, I know it's terribly important to give the same seven people an outlet to trash my son. But I have a feeling my time would be better spent. I only tune into the first 10 minutes on Rumble because I know that's when you'll mention me. So fucking predictable. Pat, I hope you really get over the severe trauma I've inflicted on you. I truly hope you recover soon. Bwah ha 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 Lols, lols. I wish we were done. Ah, what is it you say? Fuck you, dog. Ah ha 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 another one you know what's fucking insane i know that if i reached out to joey c he would have me on his network dude i'd rather die and melton is gonna kill me what up dog ha 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 so clearly like this bitch is mentally disturbed like nuts like actually nuts I want to die. I have no reason to live. You, what, are, what is it you want, Melton? Do you want to kill me? It's like uh, it's like one of those. It's like a kitty in Arrested Development who just keeps showing her tits when nobody wants it. What did you want? You want to stab me? You just want to kill me? You want me to lay down and just murder me? It's like everyone's just standing around going like, no? Fine. Break into my house. Take a knife. Stab me when no one's looking. Between the hours of 3 and 5, I'll be asleep and nobody will be home. The bottom kitchen door will be unlocked. Just work your way. It's, we're all just like, no one's going to do this. What are you? We're not mad. Yeah, fine. And then there'll be paste and shove some down my son's throat, too, because you don't care about us. My son doesn't eat it pasted. It's just like, what the fuck? You've gone full. You can call me. Nanerpus, Nanerpus, and guess what? I love Nanerpus. You can call me Nanerpus, Nanerpus, and guess what? I love Nanerpus. It's just, uh, it's just a lot. It's just a lot. So, like, we don't, we don't know who you are, bitch. We don't know. Nobody wants you dead. Nobody cares about your son. Nobody knows what's going on. Nobody wants to sneak in and murder you. Hello. How about it, dear? <laughs> How you doing there, Mr. Patrick? How do you always call in, but you never have that, anything to say? That, that Miss Disgracey, that sounds like Miss Catalano. I think she got you. She got you. She got you. Oh, <laughs> you think Disgracey is Christina C. 
Okay, well, he's gone. Oh, God. If there were ever a trucker I wish would just completely uh, pull into a fucking building or, like, uh, crash headfirst into a loading ramp. He 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 be 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 jeep be be jeep 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 just crazy AI voice chat maybe maybe I don't know if people are using the stuttering John one really um they like the Kevin one for sure oh wait hold on we got a bunch of new ones popping up here. I'm behind. If you put some pennies, add some buttons, and a glob of paste on the plate, the little dummy will eat it. Right, it's great. See, buy the little helmet, wear a pinwheel, and make him happy. Or better yet, fuck stuttering John, and let's see what disaster you can conjure up in that Bermuda Triangle of a cunt you have. Jesus, you know, intelligence goes in, and darty dar dar comes out. Darty dar. And. That Bermuda Triangle of a cunt you have. You know, intelligence goes in and darty dar dar comes out. Uncle Patty, Daddy Joey C emptied out our EBT card on Swisher Sweets, KFC and Amp, two liters of Sam's Cola. Now Mama Backpage can't afford hygiene products. Joey C. told me just to use one of his old fluted hot dog sleeves. Uh, now I am making paste that smells like dirty hot dog water and amp. Government cheese. Uh, Mama Backpage can't afford hygiene products. Mama Backpage. Ugh. DK, I live in Boston. I'll interview her for you and grab a check. Uh, from her for your donation. She's getting divorced too. Easy rot pocket night. Rot pockets. Her son might have a rot pocket too, judging by what a pussy this guy sounds like. Uh, Pulper 80 gifted one membership. Thank you very much. I think that's three uh, for the day, which is a big, big get over here. at the. We're going to make our nut. We're going to make our nut. So Rick's going to sit down and give me an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview if you keep being mean to me on the internet. I always win. Now let me get back to writing more original songs for my next album. My life is like sitting on a fire ant nest. I bought a ticket to that yuck fest in the bar in Minnesota to see that pregnant lady. Next thing you know, a three foot tall accountant is reading jokes from Uncle Milty's book on comedy. Then some fat cracker named Stoney tried to touch my ebony yam bags, so I shanked him. Oh my, why didn't that limp wrist choke out practice dummy call me? My hamburger reviews aren't paying the bills and the Hallers could have picked up a load in Minnesota and brought it back to Texas. Never bring an empty truck back, double dipping and winning. I had to wake up at 1 a.m., roof a house, and then drive Chrissy to the airport, come home and make Aaron his Celsius and eggy breakfast. I'll clean the mess up later before the shitty stepkids play in it. I then have to come uh. home and rake leaves while Aaron plays Dungeon and Dragons. I can't come. April, in a year we will be bigger than Rogan and Crowder put together, so don't make me give you the old movie one-two combination. Now finish painting our basement and get up here with those Perky's A's and shake this ashtray so they don't focus on my tears. Yeah, it's getting, uh, the desperation over here at Steel Toe is getting rough. Um, Toucan Sambo, our favorite clipper. Uh, guys, if you're calling in anonymously, you're never getting through. It's not, I mean, you can, you can keep just calling anonymously all morning long. Somebody does. It takes nothing for me to, ignore. it pops up in the corner and I just ignore it. it. It'll never get through. So you're wasting your morning. It takes nothing out of my day. It doesn't stop the show. It doesn't slow the show down. It doesn't pop up and make the computer unusable. You're not doing anything other than wasting your time. We don't give out the callers numbers here, so you can just call with your phone number to get on the show. But you'll net I mean you're other than like I mean, do it all morning long. 
uh, since I've started saying we're not going to take anonymous calls, he's called four times, four different times. But it just, it's never going to get on. So I guess just keep trying it. But I'm, I'm letting you know right now, it's just you wasting your own wheel. You're spinning your wheels, baby. Hey, Patrick, I just finished watching The Sopranos too, and I've decided to leave the old moopster and head out to New Jersey to find me a real man like Tony so I can inhale his fat gabagool until he blows his that Sunday gabagool. gravy down my cum gullet. So excited. You know, Patrick, I auditioned for The Sopranos. I read for the part of jarred sauce eating ghetto trash guinea. But the character got cut. Oh, wow. You just finished The Sopranos. Oh, I... What year is it? Now, now, if we can only get Flimsy to recommend a diet and some exercise, maybe you'll live long enough to see that Lex is through its warranty, you fucking hack, yo. The Lexus has good warranties. 48-month, four-year comprehensive, 70,000-mile. Um drive train 150,000 mile 10 year warranty on the hybrid battery. I don't need, you know, we're doing great with the Lexus. So I've had enough uh hearing about it. You old moobs. Uh our buddy Toucan Sambo is back to uh clipping. Look at look at the body language on crunches here. Anytime we're about to beg, this is Crunch's whole vibe. Here we go. Watch it work. All right, guys, 195 away from today's goal. We are a ways away, and we're about 40 minutes away from rattling the can. So if you want to jump in and chip in a little bit, we've had a great show today, and it really has been an entertaining program, the best there is. We've had a great show today. It really has been an entertaining and, uh, program. We the best there is. We've had a great show today. It really has been an entertaining program. Definitely been hit by the not nearly as many people watching as normal bug. And we've been hit by the not near as many people watching as normal bug. One of my favorite bugs sweeping the uh the internet <laughs> is really really crazy i hate when i get the bug where no one watches my show and then i have to reset my whole stream first of all he tells you it's the best show there is chip in a little bit we've had a great show today and it really has been an entertaining program the best there is He's been doing this since we met him. I, I, I don't know what this thing is. Like, look, we do a fun show every morning here at Nobody Likes Onions. I don't think it's the best show there is. I don't even know if it's the best show I've ever done. We can't plan it. We just go live for four hours. This is something you put on in the background while you work. You chat with, with other uh, people about other stuff going on in your day. You make chat room friends, you know? Unless you're disgracey, then you just choose to fight everybody and hold back your divorce settlement. I, I, I can't imagine what it would take me to come on here every day and to tell you that it was a good show. To tell you it was a fun show. Like, look, we do say... Well, that's not me saying that. That's a chorus from a musical featuring... Uh, that Australian guy, you know. Hey, Fatty Patty, the Rickster and I are going to have a nice little chat. Stop dumping on my little boy girl or there will be hell to pay. In life's shifting dance, she blooms as he finds his path. True self now unveiled. Girl's heart blooms with change. Becomes a boy. Life rearranged. New path. Courage exchanged. Blossom of her past. Petals shed. New form emerges. Boy reborn at last. Ugh. My little boy girl. Her name was Greta. She becomes Knight Melendez. Mr. Melton, it's not morning in India. Good point, Pulper. 
I never meant to imply otherwise, so I apologize for that. Bone in the Carbarian, five gifted memberships. We're going to make our nut. Did you know, guys, we have 1.6 thousand members on the channel here? That's double the 800 when we made it, you know, when when Aaron bragged about 800 once and we, like, tried to catch him. We've doubled that without even, like, you know, there's no goal. I don't tell you people were trying to strive to hit 800 members a thousand members we're at 1.6 thousand fucking members paid members on this channel and that's because of you and your gifted memberships i'm not delusional nobody's coming over here and signing up for this shit this is all because literally people like bonin and dk and and uh all the other people who give memberships chandler and who else did this morning who was our First gifter this morning early. Hold on. Pulper Wizard Nug. Basically shoving these memberships down people's throats. Nobody wants these memberships. And you guys just keep making people become members. <laughs> Deadpool just said, this is an interesting chat that just popped up in my chat. And I don't know how real any of this stuff is. Deadful says someone's taking a break from Steel Toe should be interesting. Now, I don't know. Again, I don't know what this means, but we'll be watching today to see how it all shakes out, and we will be covering it um, as we do. Anyway, back to him telling you that it's the best show there is. Every morning, remember, they the, the cope with this stuff is insane because it's always like uh they don't donate to us because we do such a good show they're too busy watching only shitty shows get money you know that kind of stuff barrister 1401 says serious question so when stuttering john's girl becomes a boy does she still take it up the ass i don't know and that'd be a question for her proctologist or some sort of entrusted family um you know Maybe a lawyer. Ooh, ooh, four thousand a month before tax, not including super chats. I don't even know if that's true. I feel like it doesn't come out to that. I think you really love Shuli. Maybe if you guys joust or dock together, it will ease tension. There's no tension. Um, we wish him well. We don't have any tension with Shuli. And uh, we have definitely been hit by the not nearly as many people watching as normal bug uh today i mean what an insane look at look at johnny's dead eyes oh yeah the not as many people watching as normal bug i hate that bug okay, so if you want to chip in a little bit it would salve the wounds that have uh, happened to our ego and of course keep steel toe on the air which is uh, paramount to me <laughs> i don't know I, I, i'm not saying that it has to be paramount to everybody Guys, if you don't gift memberships, I can't afford a Lexus. <laughs> I don't know what to. I don't know what to tell you guys. But it's definitely paramount to me. So if you feel like throwing in a few bucks, I appreciate it. Union Jack says, "What's the minimum donation?" What's the minimum donation? Uh, it doesn't count. It doesn't matter because it doesn't count for a blue wrench. I don't really give away blue wrenches due to donations. It's more based on. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Say whatever you want. NLO is the only show in your universe where you couldn't become a wrench if you tried. How many people have asked me to become fucking mods? I'm not. That's for losers and dorks who are worried about their channels. Become a wrench. It's like, yeah, it is It is all sycophants and donors. That's exactly what it is. Sorry, little Lemmy. Whether or not we have enough mods and if I trust the people not to fuck with others and get petty with it. I don't, uh, we don't really sell them. Uh, when we look to expand the mod. Yeah, they don't really sell entries into a lottery drawing either. They just totally do. Mods. When we look to add more, we'll be looking uh, the way of people who seem to be pretty goddamn loyal, as it were. Cocktiff says, so they're going to be looking to you, Chandler.
We'll be look. We'll be winking at the people who are loyal. They pay us. Wait, what? Oh no. <laughs> Gray Duckling says, uh, "Answer <laughs> thousands." Uh, honestly, today the going rate's probably about one ninety five. That's what it seems like. <laughs> Which is today's goal. Yeah, if somebody knocked that out on their own, they'd be like, hey, could you put, give me a mod if I knocked out the rest of today? Yeah, having a, re- having a really great show, but shitty results. So, yeah, I would absolutely. It's like, and, and I wonder if he really, like, in his brain constantly tells himself that. Like, we're having a great show. Why aren't we getting money? This is a great show. Why aren't we getting money? Um... And he's always telling himself that kind of like copy message. Like we did a great show, the best show there is. We do the best show on the internet. I don't know why we're not getting money. And give you just, a wrench for that. And he's always worried about it. He's always worried about it. Thank you, Paul Purr. Um, it's always at the forefront of like his, his, uh, brain. And it, hey guys, one ninety five interrupts all his little segments and stuff. It interrupts all his little his little game. They started today at two twenty five. If we go over and have a look, they're at two um oh five. So they've made twenty dollars that he's counted towards the goal. They've they've had a million like if you if you go in here, Bulls Dip has gifted several subs. They started at 225. Here's a gifted membership. This isn't even everything. Here's another membership. Here's five bucks. So that's 15. Here's two. That's 17. Here's five. That's 22. Here's 20 bucks. That's 42. Here's another gifted. That's 47. Uh, Here's 52. So they've made $52 that I can count really quickly. And even if you only were counting part of that, you're at like 30, 35. He's only taken twenty dollars off his goal of two twenty five with that fifty fifty two dollars. Okay, so he's made fifty two dollars that we can see. I guarantee you, there's a little more than that. Eric Stone said it's just so nuts. He equates donations uh, on the day of how good a show it is. People are just fans and give when they can, and it's insane thinking. I just don't even worry about it, I, and I certainly wouldn't let. Um, not getting money ruin the mood that the show ends on. Again, I've sat here for three hours and and checked the total and it comes up and I've made like 30 bucks and like whatever. And then in the last hour, I've seen, I've seen it hundreds come in. I've also just left after making 30 bucks for four hours and it's, and I don't let you know, it's not a big deal. It's not your job to make my, as much as I joke about pay my Lexus bill. Um, it's not your job to handle that. It's not your job to worry about whether I've made enough money today. It's not your job to worry. It's really not. It's really not. And we don't have, uh, stats for like how much the voice chats make and stuff. Hopefully we will get that stuff eventually, but let's just, if I just count super chats and memberships today, we're at $253. Sorry, we're at two hundred seventy-three dollars. So we're at, we're ninety minutes into the show, and we've blown way past his entire show goal just on YouTube by not even making it a thing, by not even worrying about it. That's that's what you did. Like, shut up. You know, you, you sound like disgracey. You, 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 there's so much anxiety and worry about money. Just buy a Lexus and chill. Uh, just DM'd with Corey Adams, says Lance. He wanted to be off the record, but he said Aaron did call him for the show. Aaron offered him no money other than to cover his flight and the going rate on the show Monday, $50. I believe it. Pathetic. Embarrassing. 
Um, a hundred percent believable. We know Lance doesn't make things up. Colin Madden is a new member. That seems like a made up name An American cupcake, a new member. I don't understand American cupcake. Are we not copacetic anymore? Is this bad? We say absolutely nothing and he loses his mind. It's Uh fantastic. So obviously playing right into our hands once again. Uh, he is still obsessed with the fact that we've told people the deal on his excuses on that boxing match thing. Uh-oh. He's obsessed. It's about me. He does not like when he isn't in control of the narrative. And so, now everyone's kind of seen like, yeah, Aaron's given him like 500 different scenarios where a fight, if this fight he wants, where it could take place. Yeah. And he still is doing nothing about it. Hasn't talked to me. That's why your arms are crossed. And it, he's like making video after video after video. Just one. You're panicking. Fucking relax. It's the internet. Stop taking this stupid gay shit so seriously. Wow. I, I do, uh, uh, can I say that I do want the fight? <laughs> Look, I, would, I, I do want. He issued the challenge and he's trying to tell everybody now that, like, I issued it and I need to calm down and I'm panicking. My life, it would be over very easily. I did. I mean, I said, I go, you come and you come to sparring night on Thursday. When the sparring's over, I'll give you 300 bucks and send you on your way. You have your two airplane seats. Best of luck to you. Same Won't joke. do it. And then when people come back to him and go, oh, I didn't realize, you know, when I get out of your bubble that I find out you're a lying, scared, projecting piece of shit, that he makes five or six videos in a row. He's kind of like that Eric July guy. It's All like, right. dude, just... Is my YouTube channel not public? Can you go see if I've made five or six videos about boxing matches? I think we made one. I think we made one. What is he talking about? Can he not lie about anything? He made five or six videos in a row about boxing me. I did? Fuck. I keep doing shit I don't even know. He got offended. I don't know what the fuck Michigan State University was thinking today. I mean, I he's really mad about We put out a video, I think, Thursday or Friday, and he's lost his mind about it. We've made one video. My channels are public, you liar. My channels are public. Where are the five or six videos in a row I've made about seal? What? What? And look, uh, he he's trying to win now by saying this thing. Like, I've told him all these scenarios where we'll make it work. Shut up, you dishonest, disingenuous motherfucker. This whole thing of like, we'll fly him up here to box me. We'll put on a thing. We are going to like sell tickets. People want to see it. We want to make it an event. I'm not rolling up on a random Thursday night to a shit hole in the wall gym in your hometown because you can't back up what you said. You said you would fly me out to fight me. Then you proceeded to act like anyone who challenges anyone to do that kind of thing is gay and dumb, putting it on me like I did it. You're the one who did it. You're the one who did it. And now, instead of backing down like you did for weeks, now your thing is like, I've told him to come out. He won't come out. I'm not just uninvited hopping on a plane and hoping to roll. First of all, we all know what will happen. We all know what would happen. If I got on a plane on a random Thursday and come up there and showed up at that gym, you'd have them kick me out. You'd call the police. You'd get your boxing buddies to like, you know, intimidate me and make me leave. That's exactly what would happen. Let's let's not pretend like that's not what would happen. Second of all, people want to see this. It's not a casual thing where I'm just going to like, yeah, any Thursday you want to show up, we'll do it. No, 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 no. That's not what it ever was, and you know it. And then everything you said online, you can go look at the tweets. These are all up. He's like, yeah, he just needs to go get his boxing certification and then go to USA Boxing and enroll and get insurance and get his boxing card, and then we'll set it up and it'll be a sanctioned thing. It's like, well, which is it? Do I need to casually roll up on a Thursday night to your gym? Or do I need to go through this certification process and get insurance? And which is it? Which is it? Oh, wait, none of it's real. You just keep changing the narrative and lying. 
Aaron, I'm not just casually set it up. It was your idea. You said you wanted to fly me up and do it. Set up an event. I know you suck at this. I know you're awful. We all know the anniversary show was shit. No video. No real photos leaking out about that. I can't imagine. We all know that the Chrissy Mayer event fell apart. We all know you're planning another event that's going to fall apart. You can't set up a website to sell tickets. You can't even get access to your own website to show people where you broadcast live. Go to Steel Toe Entertainment website. It's embarrassing. Click on watch live. It'll take you to Twitch. The channel hasn't existed in three years. They don't know how to promote or market or sell tickets. It's, it's a garbage fire. So this thing now where he's like, I told him to just show up any Thursday night. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Set it up. Put on your big boy pants. Acknowledge what you challenged me to. And set it up. It doesn't matter if you don't like me. Oh, oh we're not flying him out. Or you have to have two seats. Blah, 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 blah. Right, right, right. I, I, I guess... I guess since I'd have to have two seats, we can't do it. F ah, fuck. Does that sound real? I told him after we fight, I'll give him $300 and he can buy his two seats. And blah, 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 blah. Mm. Oh, so you just are full of shit. You're just not a genuine guy. You're just not serious. You're just not. Because uh, we would fly him out, but I couldn't afford it because of the two seats. Right, right. You couldn't do it because you couldn't figure it out. Aaron, you, you can't set up events. You can't promote. You can't sell tickets. And, and again, I, I, if, if anyone wants to cover my cost of flying out on a random Thursday night to go to that gym, I'll show you what will happen. I'll go this Thursday if someone wants to throw me 2500 bucks to make it happen. I'll get on a plane this Thursday and go up to Aaron's gym. And I guarantee you I'll get thrown out and and I wouldn't get the time of day. That That's exactly what will happen. And you know it. You know it. This guy's here to cause trouble. Get him out of here. Call the police. This guy's here to cause trouble. I, I'll bet you money on it. That's exactly what happened. Or do you think Aaron will be like, Whoa, Melton's here? Get him in here and lace it up. It's not going to happen. <laughs> He'll call the police. He'll call the police. So, I've, I, I, again, <laughs> go listen to the guy who just told you I made six videos in a row and then go to NLO Clips and Nobody Likes Onions and Patrick Melton. Those are my only three YouTube channels. And find, find two boxing videos in a row. Uh, I, I understand he said five or six. Find two. Find two, please. Just two in a row. And then I'll go, you're right. I am panicking. I am uh, losing my shit. Guys, good news, though. They are down to $200 over there for the goal. So he almost has enough to pay me. Um... And I'm, I'm not, this Thursday, I'll go, I'll go. <laughs> what do you think would really happen if I walked up to that gym? Do you think he'd welcome me in with open arms and be like, wow, Melton's here to spar. This is going to be great. Or do you think he'd go like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, get this guy out of here. Troublemaker, stalker. He's a crazy stalker, man. He showed up where we lived. He showed up where I work out. How much, how much do you want to bet that would be the narrative after being like, show up, pussy? It's like, uh, I, you know. And again, every time you see this guy, he's hugging himself, self-soothing. How long until he crosses his arms and starts rubbing? These two guys fighting and then goes, uh -oh. guys, stop. But they told Israel, you're going to get a country. They told Palestine, you're going to get a country. Then they both show up. Does, does Johnny even want to be here anymore? <laughs> Can we be honest? Does Johnny give any fucks about this anymore? Um, he would call Cheetos 
twenty five hundred bucks. How much do you think a plane ticket would cost? I don't know. I just threw that out. Calm down. Do you think I think it costs twenty five hundred? I I don't know. I was just saying whatever it costs. <laughs> but also, I need twenty five hundred. If you're gonna do it, I need twenty five hundred dollars. No, I guess it would probably be like uh, 300 400 for the flight. You know, obviously, I'd probably have to spend the night there. If I'm going to go Thursday night and uh, go up to his gym, it's not like I'm going to hop on a red eye at 11 after the gym. Plus, I'll be in the hospital from the sparring. You guys know that the whole point of sparring is to put somebody in the fucking hospital. <laughs> break their world open hello uh, another steel toe clip that we should watch again toucan sambo over on the steel toe boring show reddit uh put this one up oh boy why does the sound always go off oh hold on i got it down cream oh yeah that's why i brought this all up I, I have to make it a year of this or and then I'm done because I have dreams, and I have been for months now. I have dreams of super chats. Like, I have dreams where people sent in money off the air, and I wake up, and I go, oh, God, I got to I gotta write that down so I remember to knock that off today's goal and shit, and I'm like, and then I go, oh, that was a dream. Look at Johnny. Now, I'm not sure when it happened, but his head just went into his hands. That's like I have dreams where people sent in money off the air and look at his face. Look at Johnny's face. How much longer can this sustain itself? I wake up and I go, oh, God, I got to not I got to write that down. So I remember to knock that off today's goal and shit. And I'm like and then I go, oh, that was a dream. I'm literally dreaming. I dreamed a guy sent us 50 bucks yesterday. So you dream of money. It's fucking pathetic. He goes to bed and dreams of the goal. And dreams of super chats knocking out the goal. And then he wakes up and realizes the super chats aren't real. Where have all the Chandlers gone? And he's like, it's pathetic. One more year of this. I love that he's like, one more. This is pathetic and unsustainable. One more go around the sun. It's always been pathetic and unsustainable. It's always been retarded. This has always been a bad plan to go, please, can I have some money so I don't have to get a job? Please. I'm not nearly talented enough to do this for a living, but could... I please have money for a job. What if I parade my low IQ wife out here to shake her marginally B-sized breasts? Then will you give me money? She knows nothing of the world and barely can load a rifle. Then will you give us money? What if I have her show a little shoulder and you see a Jägermeister tattoo right on her forehead? Then will you show us? <laughs> Look at Johnny. Uh, and he's looking at him like, what? What? It's the, it's the saddest thing in the world. It's just like. Your business model is the saddest thing in the world. Can we please go back to nine months ago when you were like, I'm sorry that we figured this out. I'm sorry that we put on a great show and people support us and we figured it all out. Now it's like. This is pathetic. We got to stop. <laughs> Dude, you need a new revenue stream. You can't be dreaming about super chats. You can't be dreaming about. Look at Johnny just biting his tongue. Like, no shit, Sherlock. No shit. You know, who are you, Kevin Brennan, for God's sake? Yeah, I was going to say. Just... This is getting disgusting. No, Kevin Brennan can do it. Kevin Brennan could do that kind of a show. He is good enough and funny enough and sustainable enough. And look, I know some people are sick of Kevin Brennan. Some people are tired of Kevin Brennan. Some people have had enough of the Super Chat Hour. I get it. But Kevin Brennan is one of those guys who can go live with nothing and make it a good show. 
There's not very many of us. I count myself in that group. You see what happens when Chad goes live with no no thoughts or ideas. You see what happens when Chad goes live with ideas. Chad like does Kumi's cucks. He's like loaded up clips and stuff. It's still awful and boring. He's planned a show and it still goes awful and boring. So say whatever you want about Kevin Brennan. He can do that kind of a show. Sting. Well, if you're Kevin Brennan, you be confused for someone who fucked a stuffed animal. That's true. He looks exactly like the fucked a stuffed animal guy. It's just creepy. I had to check it twice. And how time. how is it like? I do. I stream for a living. He streams for a living. And I can I can uh, confirm. Getting caught fucking a stuffed animal is more dignified than streaming and asking people for money for a living. Well, so. he doesn't. He doesn't ask. He. Oof. So I love that. Um, every day Man, now. Like, that's like my. He has to do this little acknowledgement that what is happening to his show is um, untenable. To say the least. And he's still got 200 to go. He's halfway through his program over there. And uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be good. Strap the fuck in for the rest of the movie hour. Hey, hit the like button. Well, yeah, we got 156 likes. Uh, so we only need 409 uh, of you to hit that like button to continue this charade. Huh? Shall we? Pulper80 says $5. Uh, that's a nice maroon shirt that Aaron has on. He should tear off the cuff and mail it to somebody. Hold on. I don't get it. Tear off the cuff? <laughs> oh, God. Steve H., this is, this is weird. Uh, Steve H., $49.99. Here's another steel toe dream. Oh, yeah, because it's a super chat. Oh, making the goal. Steve H is making my goal. I'm having panic dreams about super chats. Ricky Bab, Johnny is trying to find the trigger with his toe. Yeah, I mean when your when your co-host puts their head in their hands and just buries it while you talk about how pathetic your entire revenue model is, it ain't good. It ain't good. Meanwhile, while you're paying Johnny to co-host, April is driving idiots down to the old uh, airport constantly. And did you see what Steel Toe, you know, the bragging never stops over here. So they still got this event pinned up, even though it never happened. It got canceled already. They've got this event pinned up. And if you go down in Steel Toe just a couple days ago, you'll see them starting to promote this. You know, Chrissy came to town, and it was normal business for a while here over on Steel Toe. The usual stuff. Look, 15 likes, 38 likes. This is a lot of stuff. This is a lot. Hold on. Chrissy was in town already. So this is all Chrissy heat, Chrissy bump. Their normal uh, like ratio and stuff. Look at this. 116 views when they go live. Three likes. 31 on this one. Pretty big. One like, five likes. This is their standard. Three likes, one like. This is what they get every day on a daily. So then they're bringing in Chrissy Mayer and this Lila Hart. Again, I don't know who this is. Comics, I guess. Uh, 26. They get this big bump because they're bringing in these two big celebs. <laughs> and then they fail to bring uh, Chrissy in. Look, he retweeted our uh, video. We made one boxing video, and he just lost his mind. Then uh, Chrissy Mayer in April went to make fun of the George Floyd Memorial. You know, no matter how you feel about the George Floyd thing and whether or not you agree with the fact that he was loaded on fentanyl and probably would have died anyway. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, no matter how you feel about George Floyd, you know, this is clearly tasteful and cool. And then Chrissy went out boxing with him on Thursday night. This is Aaron's gym where he wants me to just show up. And these are mirrors. So this is tiny. This is a tiny little shithole. And you can see Aaron over here taking a photo. Very cool. 
Very, very cool. Show up, Melton. Just show up. I'll give you $300. Just show up. So we may do that. We may try to do that. And then we got the big show. Chrissy Mayer co-hosted Steel Toe Friday, I guess. Again, I missed Friday's show. No excuse other than I did not set an alarm. I set an alarm every night for a different time, and I just didn't set an alarm, but I guess they did a banger show. And then uh, this is Lila, I guess. Delicious. Look at him. Look at this little Joini. He's so cute. Hello. Okay, so this, I have, I had not seen this. This is Aaron and April's house. This is going to be interesting. I had not seen this, but this is Aaron and April's house. So on the wall above their sofa, they have their wedding photos just lined up. Wedding photo, wedding photo, wedding photo. What's great about this? Different frames and matting on every photo. Really, really cool and tasteful. Um, I love these plastic lamps. These are great. And look at this back here. You know, again, you never get to really see how they live, but stacked up garbage and paper. This is a hoarder's home. Look at that. Just a uh, like a baker's rack stacked with, I imagine this is probably steel toe business rack. Oof. Steel toe. This is Gordy. He, he is a choke. And the, what you see here is they've got this big beanbag chair over here. A black leather sofa here. This thing has been handed down from nine generations of hunters in April's family. Weenie. And he looks so delicious. Look at him. Look. And then we also have this gray fabric sofa over here. So we have three different sofas. Nothing matches. You can see, again, this leather is scratched up paint marks you can see the the worn frayed edges beige carpet the sign of losers everywhere this little joini like what we see back here they definitely have more of these little wooden trinkets where they're like the m holtz uh we are blessed you know that kind of a a vibe again a tv a tv uh stand just l full of books and papers and xbox controllers and other garbage and trinkets they've shoved in here very very cluttered cluttered home all over the place with clutter and if i could just is a chowini how annoying is this woman, by the way? I, I'm trying to, like, Photoshop her out in my mind and ignore her. I'd have to murder. And he looks so delicious. Look at him. Look at this little Joweenie. What's a Joweenie? Yeah. So April's back here in the kitchen going, what the fuck is happening? Chrissy Mayer's here at the table. He's so cute. Hello. Say hi. And April's probably like, we don't. First of all, you know, if anybody comes to my house and starts filming like this in my living room, you're never invited back. If you come to my house to hang out and chill, put your fucking phone away. We're not on in the living room, okay? Fuck your, your social media neediness. Fuck your fucking narcissism for 10 minutes. You don't need to go live constantly. Enough. Enough. 
And and Aaron and April, I guarantee you hate this because their house is yellow, dog. You don't ever want to see this. Your ceiling, which we all know ceiling paint is flat white. Your house is yellow. Your walls are yellow. This is like, I, I, I don't know a scenario where I would make my walls a uh, smoker's teeth color. Smoker's teeth. Look at the people. Look at her. And this chick is like four foot eight and disgusting. It looks like she's just rubbed Golden's mustard all over her face. He's so cute. <laughs> Gordy. This is Gordy. He is a Chowini. Ugh. And he looks so delicious. Look at him. Look at this little Chowini. He's so cute. Yeah, I hate her. I don't know who this woman is. I hate her. More stuff from Steel Toe. We keep scrolling. Here's uh, the Chewini and April. I don't know who this is. Here's some more cool, cool, I can't breathe merch. <laughs> this is when uh, Gino tweeted this photo of April and called her uh, our princess. And then Aaron replied, Find your own white princess in hot water. So Aaron's starting to starting to like recognize that April and Gino got a little something going on here. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Here's the Chewinies. And now we're looking back into, I guess, like their dining room, their TV room again. So not only are these walls yellow, look at the choice they've made for their living room wall. Bright green screen green. <laughs> so in their living room, this is where Aaron watches TV on this glaring 42 inch screen. And they've painted the wall yellow and green. These are NLO colors. <laughs> they painted their entire house. The walls everywhere else are yellow. And the walls in the living room for the TV wall, green. And you can tell they value their privacy with this cool burlap door cover. <laughs> that is sweet, sweet, sweet. And what a sweet living room. What a sweet, cool hang. We love it. Here they are at Partners Pub. We've uh, got new headliners for the gig tonight. Nick Ricada, a lawyer who has a YouTube channel. So I know you bought tickets for Chrissy Mayer, the comedian, but we've got a lawyer here with a YouTube channel. So that'll be good, right? And then Steel Toe, this is where he says it. Three absolutes, death, taxes, and... Leela Hart and Ricada Law fill a room. Now, we already heard him go live and say 25 people walked when they find out Chrissy Mayer wasn't going to be there and it was a significant portion of the room, but they still stretched and made it work. But now on Twitter, the Cope Fest begins. Boy, Ricada Law and Leela Hart fill a room. No one knew they were going to be there. No one knew these people were going to be there. This is a last minute replacement headliner for a comedy show a lawyer so when i looked at this when i saw this photo of him being proud of this room i started looking around you know and he makes fun of me and calls me a big fat loser and stuff it's like i'm noticing a trend with like you know most of the guys in this room are big fat bearded men like these are your fans you live in minnesota let's not pretend and i thought just the epitome of it was this dude this this dude screamed steel toe he's got his iron on shirt his gut sipping on a soda with his pinky out fuck yeah i got much iron on i'm ready for steel toe over here sparsely seated 
Let's not pretend. I don't know if you know what pack a room means, man. <coughs> like, I, I don't know. <laughs> pack a room doesn't mean two people at tables on their phone. These tables are empty. And then you got LED lights just sitting on the bar. People are facing away. Look at this. These guys don't want to be in camera. Bearded fat guy. 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 Boy, what a packed room. And again, the lighting in there, it just looks electric, Aaron. It looks fucking sick. People are going to love to be there. Then you get this guy who has to be trolling young Clippa. I heard Aaron Imholtz not getting involved in the drama, the Eric July drama. Now, we don't know who that is, but then you got to see Aaron on stage. This rarely happens. Remember, he tried to do comedy. Aaron tried to be an open micer. It didn't work out. But let me explain something to you. Shuff shifting your weight foot to foot constantly is a sign of a complete lack of confidence. And another sign for a complete lack of confidence of an adult, shoving your entire, you know, he, he when he can't do this, hugging himself like he does on his show, the whole show, shoving your entire hand, nay, your wrist, down into your pants. This is, I mean, nothing screams lack of confidence like this. Second of all, where's your ween, dog? Where's that ween? Are you supposed to have camel toe on stage? You know, there's no sign of a dick here at all. There is a severe camel toe. I'll, I'll tell you what, I, I just growing up, what I know, men aren't supposed to have a thigh gap like this while they're wearing jeans. Men aren't supposed to have a thigh gap and no visible penis. So this is wild. To be on stage in front of people, shove your entire hand down your pants. I mean, that. I want you to really think about how uncomfortable that is. Shove your hand down your pants. It's, it's to take your entire hand up to here and shove that into your pocket, it's uncomfortable. So, wild, wild stuff. Very, very awkward, Aaron on stage. And again, I, I can't imagine have, having an event like this where no video comes out. You're in the business of live streaming and yet you don't live stream your business. You're in the business of photo and video, audio, production, lighting. Everything you film is purple. Everything you record sounds like garbage. And every live event you have, no audio and video comes out of it. Huh. Why, why is that? Why is there never any audio or video record of your big old events, Aaron? Huh. I don't know. Then we've got this crazy video, which is hilarious. Do you guys like Aaron, Aaron, Aaron doing a skit? Watch how funny he is. Oh, the French. Hey, here you don't want to be involved in the air. I don't want to be involved. Here you don't want to be involved. I don't want to be involved. You better run if you want to be involved, Aaron. You have, way, you have way too much money for this hundred dollars. I do not. Is anybody here? So that's very cool and funny. Um, here's a great one. This is everybody who came. So again, thanks to Ricada Law for stepping up and taking Chrissy Mayer's place. Wow, a YouTube lawyer. We paid for stand-up comedy, but you guys were able to get a local Minnesota YouTube lawyer down here to stand up and do time. That's what they called it. They got a lawyer to do time. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. And then you got April. 
You got Johnny Crutch. I mean, this is just pathetic. You have Johnny Crutches here. Just his whole fucking body is shaped like ski masks head. You got Aaron looking frumpy as fuck. Like, this is the look of a guy who thinks, I nailed it. I pulled it off. And again, where would you even get a phone that could take this low-resolution photos? Uh, these guys do this for a living. They're like, you know what we need? A third of the whole picture should be, be just headroom. And then we should make sure the lighting is as purple and bright as possible. And then does anybody have an old Pixel 0.5 that we could shoot this with so, so that it doesn't look good at all when we get close? And say what you want. You know, this, this ironed on, you can see it bunching up around the pattern because it's so ironed on and hard, this thing. And then when you, like, what is this? I noticed this too. He's got like cum all over this hoodie. There's like some white shit here. And then in between this, there's like a white. I don't know. You can't see it as much in this one. Something's going on. And then you got this little mini monster over here. It's gross. It's gross. But that's all there is. That's all there is as far as photos and videos of this event. Another kick-ass event. I love, Aaron's whole thing is like, Melton can't stop making videos about stuff I do. It's like, when are you going to start making videos about what you do? This is two big, big gatherings and parties you've sold tickets to, and there's no proof they even occurred. We have no video. We have no audio. There's no, you know, tape of anyone set. Gino didn't want to put anything out. Keanu didn't. Keanu doesn't even have any fucking comedy videos. Like, Keanu is a comedian with no proof that she does comedy. And yet, she didn't even want to take a video and put it out of that show. So I don't want to, you know, I don't want to accuse people of anything, but it seems like a real, real jar of sauce over there. Uh, addicted to Ubiquity, nice Walmart corner lamp. Yep. That shirt was Gino's cum rag. Oh, no. Y'all think? Y'all think? Hey, we got a quick update from Michael Ray Bauer, and uh, you're not going to believe this. He got a ring light to walk around and do streams. Remind you of anyone? Only the biggest losers and dorks out there, Chad and Michael Ray Bauer, are going to walk around and do a stream. Okay. Yo, everybody on the Hey Bauer channel. I was dressed up because I did a Raider video. But guess what? I got my walking stick <coughs> for my <coughs> camera phone. <coughs> so in the next... Sorry, I'm dying. Next couple days, next week or so, Let's go on an adventure. Let's watch my fat, lazy butt walk around, talk about whatever I want to talk about. It's my favorite line of this video. It's only two minutes long, but. But guess what? I got my walking stick for my camera phone. So in the next couple days, next week or so, let's go on an adventure. He's planning to take a walk. He said in the next couple of days, then he caught himself and he said, or in the next week, he's planning a short stream walk, maybe in a week, maybe in a week, I'll be able to take a walk. The stream, the streaming selfie stick is literally to go live whenever you don't have to plan a walk a week from now. By the way, Chad doesn't even do that anymore. Chad's Chad's uh, going to snap. Chad's going to snap. Keep it up. Keep driving Chad crazy. What a fucking loser. What a loser. We might have to devote a whole Chad day this week. We might have to do a whole Chad day if I don't, if I don't have to go to Minnesota. And uh, we can get this nut. Get this Lexus nut. You know what I mean? 
Let's watch my fat, lazy butt walk around, talk about whatever I want to talk about while I film it and get some exercise. Cause, cause, like Chad, you know, oh, I just the reason I haven't done any streams is I didn't have this stick. It's like Chad. Oh, the reason I don't have any viewers and the reason I don't have a show and the reason I don't have any ideas or can't be consistent is because I don't have a studio. It's like, right, 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 right. Yeah, as soon as you get the studio up and going, Chad, and the ring light, we know. We know it's all going to come together and click. You're going to get talent. Things are going to work out. And we can, I can't go live because I don't have the data on my phone coverage plan. Got limited data. But hey, I can watch. Again, these aren't excuses anymore. I mean, have we all seen Ryan Reynolds on the Mint commercials? It's thirty dollars for unlimited everything on every like I pay thirty five unlimited everything on T Mobile. Tethering data calls international roaming. I went to Australia for three months. I didn't call whoever I wanted, use data across the whole country. Europe I go for three months. I don't change a number. Unlimited data roaming, unlimited thirty five bucks a month. You don't have the data? You don't have the, you know, what What are we talking about? It It's very, very cheap. It's very, very cheap to get data on your phone now. Walk around with a stick. That's right, I can walk around with a stick. You see? Yeah, you like it. You like it. It feels real good, don't it? Feels so now he's doing it in his house. Real good to walk around with a stick. <laughs> yeah. You can, even, you can even go in your bathrooms. You only have two rooms. So, like, yeah, there's a reason your shows are always, like, in the main room or in the bathroom. There's only two rooms. Yeah. You could even, you could even give a tour with a walking stick. Little rascal's got my plunger because, you know, I got the bubble guts all the time. Oh, no. Bubble guts. The bubble guts. You know what I don't like? I don't like him leaning into our thing, but not acknowledging it and not trying to be my friend. Hey, Bauer, we want to give you money and help you work on stuff. You think it's funny. You love the bubble guts bit. You reference it all the time. We know you've seen it. Why don't we just talk? Why don't you give it a shot, you fucking fat loser? You fat sack of bubble guts shit. No, no, I'd rather just plan a walk for in a week or so. Who knows? In a week or so, I may be able to do a walk with my... He keeps calling it a walking stick? No, it's, it's a... Bauer, it's a selfie stick. <laughs> uh, some people will love that. But hey, I got a walking stick. How excited are you for that? Oh my God, it's Halloween. It's Halloween. We all know it's Halloween. This is Halloween. He doesn't know the difference between a walking stick and a selfie stick. And by the way, he needs both. If they make a walking selfie stick, he should, uh, you know. This is Halloween. Yeah, so I got my walking stick. And I can start doing some more stuff for you guys in my apartment Great. as well. Yeah, finally. He's just needed this stick. That's why he doesn't put out content. He just needed this stick. Hit the like button, will you? We're trying to get 200, you sacks of garbage. Give you a little bit of action. Walk around the block, the neighborhood, <clears throat> and hopefully not doxed. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just wanted to do this quick little video. Let everybody know. People don't even know what doxed means anymore. Do you think being recognized in your neighborhood means doxed? I'm going to walk around my neighborhood. Hopefully I don't get doxxed. It's like, what? That I got a walking stick or whatever they called, a, a selfie stick. Yes. And <gasps> it seems to be working pretty good. So it'll add something to my life to get me out outdoors, get a little bit of exercise. And he thinks this stick is going to be the motivator to get him outdoors to work out. To, like, get him outdoors to, like, do stuff. You know what's going on. No, he was in Dude, Where's My Car? All the posters on the wall are like projects he had minor, minor roles in. 
because that's how it works. You know what I'm saying? Uh, American Cupcake. Hey, uh, look is Skinny DG. Hey, look is Skinny DG. Um, yeah. Hey, look is Skinny DG. I don't know who DG is. I know people are going to. I know he's like something to do with Joey C or something. Let's not make DG a guy. DG's not a guy. Like, he's just a loser who lays on his belly like fat girls in videos. He never has anything to say. He's not a part of, like, any stream he's on. He's like Lou the God. It's like, oh, somebody fat who's just going to eat Cheetos and play video games in the background? Cool, cool, cool. So I don't know what DG is or who he is or how anybody relates to him or knows him. Let's not make DG a man, okay? Mr. Panhandler, have you heard about the girth of Gaz Hog? Uh, no, but I smell a Friday art contest. If I ever. But I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for watching the videos. And I'm going to do a live stream sometime this week. I'm not exactly sure of the day, but I'm going to give you guys my top 10 Halloween movies from my life. So join me for that stream. But for now, I just want to say I love y'all. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. Go Raiders. We're playing the Bears. I'm a big football fan. Got my fantasy football. And oh, these noticed. are things that make me happy. Never noticed. So find what makes you happy and do it. Today's a beautiful day. I got a selfie stick. And I'm going to get some exercise and talk to you guys. Fuck yeah. Appreciate you. Love y'all. Have a beautiful weekend. Peace. Peace. Yeah, I um I hate that. I hate that. But look forward to Bauer. He's planning a walk. He got a selfie stick, so now he's gonna be able to be um active out and about. Um you know? Hold on, what is this? Oh, DK sending me a photo I already went over. Come on! Give me a chance to get to it, you fucking psych. Oh, Jeff sent this. Hey, guys, let me, like, if I'm going over fo photos on Steel Toes timeline, I'm probably going to go over that photo. Four people send me the same photo. Look at this. Look at this. Did you see? I did. I did see. I did. I did. Chad hasn't done outside wikes, uh, outside walks in a while. You are changing Bauer's life, Onion. No, he. I sent him a hundred dollars in merch. He threw it away. He won't even. He won't even have a conversation with me. It's so fucked. It really is fucked up. This is fucked up. You know what I mean? Sean guy named Rick. I keep these things work trying to get me to be a correspondent for you and pay me. And I respectfully uh, we, uh, decline because I'm just focused on myself. Um, you know, I got the selfie stick so I can um, investigate my uh, bubble good touch here by poking it uh, down in the bowl. Uh, toilet Takash for the win. That's so gross, Bauer. We. We should do a show together. When I wipe, it's all, all chocolate-covered cherries uh -huh. down there. So I guess the I guess the Shuli Network is like trick stuttering John into playing copyrighted music that they own, and now they're like threatening to copyright strike stuttering John. And they're like on the fence about it because Stuttering John said if he gets another copyright strike, he's never coming back. It's like, so now like um, the Shuli Network keeps going like, should we or shouldn't we? Should we strike the, him or not strike him? And it's just like, oh, God. I really like, I can't even begin to click on the BS show anymore because I know it's going to be Stuttering John. Stutter and John, everybody. It's like, what the fuck? 
I don't even know anymore. I'm just here to watch it all fucking fall apart. I have no idea what's happening anymore. I, 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 that BS show and the Shuli network looked like for a minute, like they were headed in a direction and like diversifying what they, the content they create and put out. Boy, did it all just go streamlined. We got Chris Abel's now with replayables. By the way, is replayables still on? Can I do a quick check of that? How did they do last uh, Wednesday and Friday? Let's see. Replayables. Shuli Network 2. That one's still on, right? What am I going to do with that Chris Abel's? I think he may be buying views. Holy shit. It's even worse. It's even worse. Look at this. Last Wednesday, 453. And then Friday, 446. They got less on Friday than they got on Wednesday. Zen's day, if you will. And this Bobby Fran guy looks fucked up, by the way. I might be a nice guy, but Bobby Fran looks fucked fucked up <laughs> okay yeah. Robin Williams arms there oh shit come dragon said no come dragon I absolutely can and by the way uh ladies and gentlemen make sure that you turn on your gifted settings um in in your settings so this guy Bobby Fran I don't know he looks fucked up man watch him watch the faces he makes so that way you can receive a gifted membership as he does a lot of like he 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 <laughs> this like grin right here it's like what a nice like gregarious guy would like try to be like personable but it's like do you know what your face looks like you look like you're about to rape a child like you look creepy as fuck dude people throw those out he does these all the time these like smiles where he's like he 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 but it's like your face looks fucked up when you do that you look like spider alomar like you can't grow a full mustache so it just looks all fucking jack-o'-lantern teeth and weird. Because that does happen frequently uh, during the show. So people like that. He, 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 he. Inky Rips, T-Bone on the stream. Let's go. Fuck yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can catch a gifted membership. And then uh, what that does is it highlights your name and, and uh, gives you exclusive. It gives you access to all the shows on the network and stuff like No, that. it doesn't. No, it doesn't. So now they're blatantly lying over there at Shuli Network. A gifted network to the Shuli Network 2 doesn't get you shit. It doesn't get you shit. There's no other shows on the Shuli Network 2. So what does it get you access to? Nothing. Nothing. Keep gifting them, Dave Dallafor. Keep gifting them. What a bunch of liars. Like that. Uh, it, but all right, man. That was DoorDash, man. That was a great one. Uh, have a friend. Oh shit! I missed that. What, what did you say, Flex? So I looked bright. Uh, is bright on the screen. So they they've got less viewers than they've ever fucking had over there. Five comments on the on the show, and by the way, you know three of them are Chris Abel's. Forty four thumbs ups. It's just dead. It's dead, and you want to pretend like nobody's buying viewers or listeners or whatever the fuck. Okay, we all know better. We all know better. I got my ring light and walking stick. So now I will look like a 600 pounds weight loss patient walking from couch to refrigerator. Sit your orca ass down before you fall over <laughs> and we have to pay for the medics to come winch you back up onto your industrial size couch. <clears throat> now go get some extra data on that cricket phone, you bacon neck. If you walk around with a stick, you can also use it for self-defense. All the cool cats are doing it. If the stick don't work, then pull out a gun and start blasting. Well, Donkey, if you need any tips on walking with a lighting stick, just call me. I suggest you start by just aimlessly meandering around your Section 8 apartment first to build up stamina. Yeah. I got I to gotta quit my own show. All these hacks and their ring lights and walking sticks. Melton, stop having fun and smoking pot on Friday nights. Join, though.
the skinny margarita club with me and the, and the other college girls who drink these glasses of sugar <laughs> since stuttering John or Mario Bosco, the link. Oh God. I, yeah. I mean, look, Friday night was a fun show. We made it about halfway through the Chad Kevin debacle. I want to do the rest of it. I'd love to do the rest of it. The uh, other half of the Chad Kevin show. I mean, Chad was a maniac. You don't think Chad was drinking on uh on Friday, on Friday's MLC, when he came on, just screaming, his glasses were all fucking gummed up again. The opposite of what he was on Thursday with the psychiatrist. And then both Kevin and Chad do this thing to me where they're like, Melton talks about Chad drinking, like Melton was fucked up. And I was like, I don't, hey, idiots, I don't have a problem. I don't have a drinking problem. Drinking doesn't get in the way of my productivity. Drinking doesn't get in the way of my relationships. Drinking doesn't get in the way of my success, my business. I don't drink, you know, to excess. If anything, I maybe drink once a week, but not even every week. So, like, I love this thing where I, like, uh, first of all, I don't fall asleep on the microphone. Kevin's like, he was like this and couldn't even talk. It's like, no, I wasn't. It's all taped. Wait, grow up, everybody. Clay Combs, gifted membership. We got him. We got him. Comedy shaman showing us all how it's done. Um, <laughs> What happened? So it's like, yeah, I'm going to have a drink, and I'm going to get fucked up, and then I'm also going to run my show and do my show. Chad's falling asleep on the stream. Chad's drunk at 1 p.m. every day. I'm not going to sit here and let you lump me into that. Like, I, I I get drunk once a month on the stream, and then Chad gets to go like, Melton's going to talk about me drinking? It's like, yes, you're drunk every time you go live, fat boy. You're drunk every time you go live, you mental midget stream soldier. So, yes, we are going to talk about your drinking. You have a drinking problem. I don't. I do just fine. I'm killing it with the drinking. <laughs> I love drinking. Jesus fucking Christ. What's that smell? It smells like old tuna cans mixed with a homeless man's socks, April. Did you forget to take the trash out or do you need to wash your clam? Speaking of people who need to wash their clam, Heather Gillespie... I know we just checked in on her last week, but she's been very prolific. Even even uh, between uh, Saturday and today, she's done even more that I haven't even caught up on yet. But she did this live stream on last Thursday, which is the day we talked about her. Later that day, she goes live and does a Q&A session with a live stream. And you never really get unfettered access to Heather like this, where we get to see her react in such a real you know real time manner so i thought we'd watch a little bit of this it's it's uh almost an hour long so we're not gonna cut near through all this because we do have another very funny woman to make fun of but um it's worth uh just seeing heather here get into some weird uh cope she's always like you know making excuses and stuff but the funniest part I find about Heather is that she's like, she looks down on people like she's doing real business stuff while she lives in a tent with nuts and doesn't have access to her own children. But that's just me. You let me know if you see the similarities. The state and the county and the city and being ignored and left outside in a tent. Thanks. Um... Anyways, the point is these people being ignored and left outside in a tent. Like who left you outside in a tent? Who left you outside in a tent? That doesn't happen. People are losers. They're, it's been four days that they're following us around a new set of losers. Um, and they don't do anything to help me with the agenda. I make it very clear in public that I haven't wasted my time here in this fucking bullshit ass tent. As a grown up adult, I can't even continue uh, to live my life because I'm in a space where some people here we go listen to this we've heard this before but listen to this are permitted the opportunity 
to fuck me while I am semi-conscious or in a lucid state. She's living in a tent and she's living a life where people are permitted to fuck her while she's unconscious or in a semi-lucid state. She's always claiming that she's being raped. It's like... Where and when is this rape happening? And she says she she always says she reports it. No one will do anything. She also has a boyfriend. Let's not forget Xavier, no matter who's wearing his skin. It's like, where's this boyfriend while you're constantly being unconsciously raped? And when I report it to law enforcement, no one does anything to assist me in any way. That incident occurred. Believe all women. In 2020, 18 months ago, and I ended up pregnant with twins. Um, I reported to everyone involved, the police, the hospital. I don't know what's happening. Um, it literally feels like I'm being drugged at times, like I'm lucid. It feels like I'm being drugged at times. I mean, like, me too. Me too. You know, Moody brought me, th brought, uh, well, he brought it for, for my wife, but she's never here because Rick. But Moody brought some chocolate from New Zealand. I had a piece of that the other day. Believe it or not, 20 minutes later, I got real sluggish. And I was like, who's drugging me? And then I covered all my holes. You better not. <laughs> oh, wait. Was I just in a diabetic coma from eating chocolate? Right, right. You feel drugged. She feels like she's being drugged. Again, where's your boyfriend? Where's your dad? Then there was a reoccurrence of that near the Whole Foods. Or your or your mom, or your they, or your trans child, right, Greta? Um, in Saganash. Um, I'm sorry, Faganash? Occurrence of that near the Whole Foods. Um, in Saganash. Faganash sounds like a fake town. Is Faganash, Illinois, a real area? Um, <clears throat> something very similar took place while we were on our way walking towards the Pacific Ocean. Um, I didn't know I was pregnant yet, but I was. The baby's passed away because I she's talking like she's a turtle and she's got to find a place on the beach to bury her eggs. We were walking towards the ocean and then I realized I was pregnant. I went into preterm labor on December 26th in the Airbnb that I was staying at. I was working full time at a place called Gittier. Well, there's going to be an additional cleaning fee if you give birth in my Airbnb. I'm letting you know that right now. If I have to clean up any afterbirth, look, scrimp and eggs is included. If you give birth in my Airbnb, first of all, you've got to declare an additional person staying there. We're going to have to prepare the pullout bed. Matter of fact, you, somebody should have prepared the pullout bed nine months earlier. You know what I'm saying? Fuck yeah. <laughs> Got him. Um, and the day before Thanksgiving, my... The Every bed I'm in is a pullout bed, if you know what I mean. CEO Langston Duggar walked into the office and asked to talk to me, showed me a YouTube channel. Um, that was making fun of me and asked me not to wear company gear outside because the we've heard about this before she got she lost her job because she was doing youtube content in her company uniform with logos company didn't want any bad publicity he asked was i okay was i safe i told him i did not think i was safe that my life has been on the line numerous times all right well you're fired that i have been bludgeoned that i have been beaten that i have been stabbed that multiple apartments have been broken into that i have i'm just gonna say it heather you sound like a lot you sound like a lot who would want to deal with this been being gang stalked and followed since dylan smith's release from the idoc gang stalked I mean, she never, every time we're with her, she's like annoying everyone around her. You're, if you're really scared that you're being stalked and people are coming after you, why would you go into a tent where you can't see who's approaching you? You know, we never see anyone in these videos who wants anything to do with her. As a matter of fact, the public seems to steer clear and walk out of her way. Xavier, her boyfriend slash soulmate, doesn't even want to seem to be nearby, nearby you know? Inmate number Y12173, and that I was scared for my life. I continued working while pregnant at Gatir until I gave birth prematurely 
went into full-fledged labor, contractions and everything. We know what labor is, thanks. And both babies passed away. I literally gave birth to the babies myself, delivered them out of my vagina to my own two hands. Wait till the cave women hear about this. Um, ambulance took me to Swedish Covenant Hospital where I was treated. Um, obviously, I needed a DNC to... Rem Swedish Covenant Hospital? I just pictured the Swedish chef as her doctor. He's just like, first we got to pour the baby out of the Persian. You get the uterus around the room. You hear the hair just like you're thinking. Cheep, 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 cheep. Paul Parady, thanks for the gifted membership. Beloved Chatter, thanks for the gifted membership. Paul Parady, thanks for the super sticker. Beloved Chatter, thanks for the... Oh, wait, no super sticker from Beloved Chatter? What a sack of shit. I'm so generous. I just love to train with these new young hard-bodied boxers. Humble brag. Then when we're done, I can ogle them in the showers and rub one out. God huh? damn it, Aaron. How are you going to satisfy my hungry, meaty gash after that? Oh, God. Thank God for power tools. Yeah, I wonder if if uh, April gets upset when Aaron doesn't recharge the batteries on the old Ryobi. <laughs> There's another battery on the on the on the tool cabinet. <laughs> She's just got a giant paint stirrer on the end of it. Move the placenta. I no? didn't go into birth with the afterbirth on my own. Um, I had surgery as soon as I arrived. I stayed in the hospital for three days after that. Um, that was, I believe, November, I'm sorry, January 1st, so New Year's Day of 2023. We care. Um, <laughs> we care. And I was, I was just not okay. You know, I was three days after losing two babies. Um, I had to walk from Harlem and Belmont. To the ocean? Because Xavier and I had nothing clean, no clean clothes, no clean blankets, nothing. And we had no our, uh, no Airbnb reservation. So we, I walked, I finally... She's like Jesus at the end. <laughs> There's no room. There's no room. If you were coming into Jerusalem on a, on a weeknight, you know, fine. But you, you come in here on a weekend, Jesus, three wise men, you got to book a room. You got to book a room. You can't just roll up hotels tonight style, you know? We got a, an Airbnb on the northwest side called Michael's House. An Airbnb. There's a review in the Airbnb review section there. <laughs> okay. From Michael. Um, and we walked. And that was near Higgins. So from Harlem and Belmont to near Higgins, four days postpartum after delivering twins at 20 weeks gestation. And it wasn't a miscarriage She's because of saying words, gestation, postpartum. Yeah, we get it. We get it. You have woman parts. What, what are we doing here? Uncle Patty, All Night Heather wants to teach me how to fish for brown trout. She keeps saying Xavier uh, is going to throw mud darts at my three-car garage. Jesus. I am confused. Help me, Uncle Patty. You're my only hope. April, oh, sorry. Auntie Heather wants to teach me how to fish for brown trout. She keeps saying Xavier is going to throw mud darts at my three-car garage. <laughs> oh, God. Fish for brown trout. What, are you going noodling up there in your asshole? Miscarriages, it's like, oop, I got my period. I went into labor and saw physical baby body parts come out of my body and a sack with the baby in it. It was a bag for life. Big difference. Both of them are tragic. Delivering something that looks like a human that comes out of your body, also traumatic. Okay? If it was a duck or a bear, I would have been fine. But it looked like a human. And I was like, gross! Get it out of me and throw it away in the park. Um, She's pregnant again, too. Let's not forget.
She's like 22 months, sorry, 22 weeks pregnant again right now. So this is going to happen again. She's going to just, you know, snail trail a baby out onto a sidewalk and keep moving. About two weeks after. Ma'am, your baby's dragging. Thank you. I didn't even know. I delivered early. I got a text message from some random person named. It's not uh, a contest. She's always telling you how she delivered early. I was, I delivered five months early. They said I was way ahead of my class and I was so advanced. (laughs) This is like your baby wasn't. Um, Not Laquan. Laquan. That ain't a good name. Not Laquan. What was that guy's name? We don't know. Um, Lakai. Lakai. Or Chaim. Or Fouché. F O U C H E. Lakai. L A K A I. Uh, I had no idea who this person is. I met him one time in the office. Other than that, had never seen him. My immediate manager was someone else, and that's who I responded to and reported to every day. Um. I messaged her. We had a good relationship, uh, you know, informal. I messaged her a photo uh, or a a small video clip of myself the day that the baby's passed, December 26th. What? My baby's just died, but I would like to cut a video. And she knows, you know, a decent portion of what's going on with me. Um, So is this woman back again? Xavier, what did I say? So I'm going to need you to stop engaging with her. Imagine just yelling at a tent. You can't see what's going on. You're like, is she back? Xavier. No, but you just tell her she's a bitch. Whatever. No, I don't have her Swedish fish, and I'd thank her to stop asking. What's she saying now? Xavier! Huh? No, and I've told you to leave her alone. And I wish you'd stop engaging. Xavier! No, I don't want a McDonald's coupon book. Thank you very much. They're not even good at these participating locations. Xavier! Imagine just yelling around you. You don't even know where anybody is or what's happening. Are you just yelling? Xavier! No, you know I do not like filet of fish. Something about that sauce. Xavier! It's like, what are you? Go out of the tent. Everything doesn't have to be live. Heather, we can't have you wearing company gear outside of the office. I got abducted by aliens while Mexicans stomped on my gaping pussy while my boyfriend was playing a flute and jerking off Bigfoot, who was hanging out with Satan, while I delivered two kids using a Swiss army knife and a catch's mitt. Johnny Bench used all while cooking a hot dogs over a big lighter. You're fired, Heather. What was it, ma'am, you said you wanted? What was it, ma'am, you said you wanted? What was it, ma'am? You said you wanted. Xavier! Just yelling up in a tent. I went. I wish you would. I just said you should stop engaging her. I tell you. There is no room for publicity. I already asked you to get back inside. Do that. Xavier! Get in this tent. Xavier! I already asked you to get back inside. (laughs) Do not make me weld this flap shut. How many times do I got to ask you to just get in this tent? Xavier! Or stop engaging with this woman. You want me to get the water? No, I don't. Because I asked you to do that about 20 minutes ago. And rather than doing so, you've been engaging with random women, getting accused of doing God knows what. And I don't want the drama or the headache. Please sit down. I need to finish giving my updates. (laughs) 
You don't want me to go get water? No, because I told you to do that 20 minutes ago. And you just walk around engaging with strange women. Sit down. I need to finish giving my update. Holy shit. Holy shit. Right now. Do you see what the fuck I deal with? I mean, this is... It's like having a five-year-old or a grown-up with autism at times. <laughs> if only everybody would just listen to Heather and get it together. <laughs> he seems fucking kept. Jesus Christ. He knows what they're doing. I've explained. They're trying to make problems. They're trying to instigate some sort of... No, you know, they're just other homeless nuts like you. <laughs> like, you think everyone's after you. No one knows who you are. Oh, outlash or some sort of, I don't know what to call it, you guys. Outlash. Guys, this is all part of the target. Out with, outlash. Thing that they do, they literally follow us from location to location and start this shit over and over and over. Close the door, please, so that I can finish my update. The door? The door. Close the door. We're trying to have a private conversation in here. Shut the door to the tent. Ten more likes will be so good, everybody. Could you hit that like button for us? That means so much. We just need ten more. Tell your dad to hit hit the like button. That'd be great. I don't want her to grab my book bag or something. Get it and bring it inside. I don't want her to grab my book bag. Yeah, bring it inside. That's how you do control property. You bring it inside. You know, as much as this government would like to make you believe walls don't work. That is our primary means of securing our belongings is putting them inside a perimeter. <laughs> Build a wall. That's not the answer. It's like it's literally how we protect everything everywhere. <laughs> That'll never work. <laughs> Sorry to get political. Sorry to get topical and political. Oh, holy shit. Um, Chris Bueller, $50. Jesus Christ. When did this come in? Uh, I can't get enough of this nut bar. She's the goat of mental illness. She really is a terrific find. She really is a terrific fun, and I hope we have another one for you uh, a little later today after we finish with Heather. Uh, DK, Xavier, stop. Xavier! Xavier! <laughs> stop munching on that other crazy lady's meth muff. Get in here so I can keep telling people how crazy I am. It really is weird. She's, she acts like it's a job. She's like, I need to keep giving my updates. Get in here and sit down. Get in here and sit down. I need to keep giving my updates. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, we forgot how important your updates were. Carry on. Carry on my way. Word. What is she wiping? Can I zoom a little? Whoa. Unfucking believable. It's like people will show you the most disgusting sides of themselves. Like, disgusting. How do you start an argument and a PR, like, escapade with someone like me? Like, I'm, I'm so non-confrontational. It takes literally, you have to bring your, your animal to urinate. A She's so non-confrontational, she gets raped all, all the time. She's never like, hey! She's like, I guess. <laughs> few feet or inches from where I'm standing to even get a rise out of me but they just keep pressing and pressing and pressing like you say draw boundaries and have clear boundaries there's nothing funny about telling someone I'm having a panic attack I have a fucking panic disorder and anxiety back off please and the person gets closer and said that is why I keep telling you guys this is Satan's world Satan wants me I to I mean it's almost like the people on the street don't respect you or your uh area. To beat the fuck out of a bitch while I'm pregnant. That is what Satan wants. Good thing you're not confrontational. I know that is not from God. Jehovah God. 
Whoa. I don't call him Jehovah, but Xavier's mom does. So I try to do it out of respect for her. Jehovah God, please. I am sensing so many nefarious, just evil, evil presences around us that want an argument, that want a fight, that want some sort of backlash from two otherwise incredible You can call me Nannerpus, Nannerpus. In this moment, every spirit has the ability to become unpeaceful oh, to be no. at hey you disrest, get your damn unrest. hands off her but we are minding our own business giving our live updates and relaxing for a moment her live update on on i'm sorry what am i getting updated on heather and xavier's nutty romp through life please god keep us both strong intelligent two steps ahead of these people who are doing any and everything. By the way, when you walk by a homeless person in a tent, this is what they're saying, always. They're always talking to God. They're always telling people to leave them alone. It's like, what is going on? Get a job. Beloved Chatter says she's relaxing for a moment, doesn't she? Yeah, I mean, from what hard work? Impossible to make their cameo appearance oh no get fame notoriety or control the narrative please continue to keep us aware of their nefarious pr intentions what and just keep us in control because it's been four years of this type of abuse but i don't think that if i go in front of a judge covered in blood they're gonna care how many years i've been being abused if I go before a judge covered in blood, nobody's going to care how long I've been abused. I don't know if this is true. It's heartbreaking if it's so. Um, I'm going to assume it's fake until proven otherwise. I got a message here from Nick Gurr, who's fatty melt, who hates us. He hates us over here. He's ruined my show it's made me second guess everything uh i exposed you on steel toe for converting chandler i didn't do anything to chandler now everybody has joined forces and gotten steel toe to their goal already sorry onions that's not what i see i see uh 170 over here on the total Let's see what Aaron's saying, because I'm sure that'll be truthful and not cope at all. And they would uh, they would say, oh, your baby's born, blah, blah, Would you like to see your baby? And then you see your baby, and then, boop, back to work. Mm-hmm. Off we go. Or, woman's you got, got things it. to do. Yeah. The woman's got it. So Sean McVay is kind of pulling. Um, yeah, I don't know. It says 170. So have they really hit the goal? Are they lying? Wow, shut it down if true. Yeah, I mean, look, if Chandler turns on me now and goes back to Steel Toe, I'll I'll end my life. Everything I have is because of Chandler, and everything I've ever gotten is because of Chandler. And actually, I have this Lexus, you know, on layaway, hopefully today, to pay for it with Chandler's money. So if Chandler were to walk away from this show and stop supporting, not only would it rip away my ability to drive a luxury automobile, but if I saw him go back to Steel Toe, I would. The headspace I would be in would be, it would rock my world. It would buy, It would rock my world. Chandler's buying you a new Lexus. Is he really? Chandler, did you call and pay for the Lexus? I got to do my stuff on. Oh, my God. Did you guys all get together and get me a Lexus?
Oh, God. Oh, my God. Is it parked outside with the big bow? Do they have those big bows, by the way? Um, Hold on. Uh, Seamus McAnus said, YouTube lawyer Nick has his set recorded and will be posting it to locals. Yeah, again, the guy's not even a comic. But I would love uh I would love to see his set. So if we could get a hold of that, I would be very, very interested. I'm I'm letting you know that right now. If we can get a hold of the lawyer that they had headline the show instead of Chrissy Mayer, so they didn't have to uh remove tickets. I would I would love I would love to see that. But if you guys have gotten together and got me a Lexus, that's just great. That's just great. Um, thank you very much. That means more in the world. And again, do you think they have the? Sorry, and again, again, do they have those bows? If I go buy a Lexus, I should demand one of those bows they have for Christmas. I know you already have them in the back for Christmas. I want one of those big bows. I want one of those big bows. DK, do you think there is radiant heat in that tent? Ooh. Just wafting up from her undercarriage. Dear God. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't want to have to find out. Amen. What? So sorry about that, you guys. Um, the baby's passed. I sent to my immediate manager a little like clip of the actual event occurring and me crying and like what? telling her like I can't even believe this is happening like the day after Christmas and she like I said knew a lot about what was going on with me as did the CEO of the company and a few other people I kept it pretty much for the most part professional at work only telling them little things about what was going on trying never to like get too much into it um Everyone was Somebody's wearing Xavier's skin suit, and I'm raped nightly. The police won't do anything about it. I can't get custody of my kids. One time I had a baby, but they died, and then I had another baby, and they died, and then I tried to go live about it and do my updates, but somebody keeps following me and my boyfriend around in our tent, and they're trying to get us to drop the suit. But I don't want to bug you guys with that at work. Imagine a woman at your work like just talking like that all the time. Yeah, you're fired. You're fired. <laughs> we don't need a nut here just running around babbling about rape and aliens. You're going to like the way you look. It was really nice, and I had the strong desire. I have been deprived of love and companionship for quite some time now. I mean, wh which is it? Are you nonstop raped or are you deprived of love? Because rape is love. Rape is love. What is love? Baby, don't rape me. So every time I'd meet someone else, I'd be like, oh, my God, can we be friends? You know, that type of thing. But um, I, I held back, you know, and I was just nice to people when they were nice to me. If they were mean to me or short with me, I tried to stay pretty indifferent. And, you know, that's it. I am pretty. So, long I'm story short, I get, a I get a message back from Lakai two weeks after I sent my, the first message to my manager. And my manager is a, a lady, and this Lakai is, is a guy. And She's a lady. And I told you, I've seen him maybe at the office once. He's supposedly from New York. I have no idea who this guy is. He's your manager, you just said. And he texts me saying that I was, I was terminated for sending my manager graphic content. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm terminated. Again? For sending graphic content to my manager what the fuck is going on you know and that's that was the 21st job that i've ever either either been bullied out of chased out of harassed out of stalked out of or had some sort of weird like situation happen that never happens like who can say oh i lost five jobs in the last year one because uh, my manager c forgot that he hired me walked in two weeks after I started and was already on payroll and said, you don't work here. I didn't hire you and literally called the police. She did the George Costanza. 
where she just assumed she was hired and started showing up to work. She said she was on payroll, but she wasn't hired. It's like, which is it? Acting as if I was an intruder on the business. I have it all on video. I have paychecks. She also like is whipping out phones and video recording people in her office of employment. I don't know why I got fired. They said I didn't work there, so I took out my phone. I started recording and screaming. And then they were like, we have to let you go. I was like, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. Just because I screamed and stream YouTube at work, you guys are out of your minds. From them. No, I think that was Penske, not Vandalay. It was Penske where he did the, uh, but I could be wrong. But I'm pretty good with the old Seinfeld stuff. That I Vandalay was not a real. Picked up from that location. My background check is on file. All of my new hire paperwork is still in my knowledge. Uh-oh, she has the same data plan as Bauer. Again, he, Bauer says he, he can't do that many streams because he doesn't have the data plan. Meanwhile, everybody with an Obama phone, you know, Heather Gillespie's out on these streets streaming all day, er, day. Novel bag. That's a good point. Somebody says that winter's coming and this bitch is out on the streets in a tent in Chicago. Right, right. She's over half term, you know, with her pregnancy. For some reason, he didn't remember hiring me and that was enough to tell me I had to go. Unbelievable. Lifetime. Corn Diff's got a good one. <laughs> I'm sorry, not Lifetime. LA Fitness. That was at export. LA Fitness. Exact same thing. Hired by a hiring manager, Bill, um, what was Bill's last name? Who knows? Bill. Corniff says, how many times a day do you think she has to wipe poop off her hands? I mean, just her hands? She needs to get out of that tent. I'm getting claustrophobic. When it's everyone else, it's usually you that's a common denominator. Yep, 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 yep. Bill. And you want to be my Benton, latex salesman. Hired at, as the GM of Arlington Heights location. Yeah, 213 likes. Thank you guys so much. Hit the like button if you haven't had a chance to do that. You really did it for Wizard Nug. He's in between all of this chaos. And I figured, you know, I've applied to everywhere in Chicago. I have a bachelor's degree. Let me go apply out here at a few places. Maybe if I find somewhere out here, apartments are cheaper. I can rent a room, get an Airbnb, you know, maybe crash on my dad's couch or my grandma's couch for a night whatever i get hired on the spot at arlington heights i go back to my grandma's she's like um sorry honey but you have to leave tonight xavier's got a mom she's got a grandma they can't stay with anybody you know I, we say this all the time but like how many people would you have to get through before you were on the streets you know I, I'd like to think if I didn't have a place to stay tonight, like five of you would reach out like, hey, man, if you really need like a couch or a room, like so you're not outside in the elements, like, you know. They're always mentioning family members, whoever has her kids, grandma, Xavier's mom. How many people would you have to burn through before you were out on the street? Again, like acquaintances of mine would let me crash if i needed to no 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 no. get out and you, what i'd have to do how little would i have to contribute to a friend and a home to be asked to leave like if i'm crashing in your spare room or whatever like while you're at work i'm cleaning i'm cooking i'm you know whatever you can do mr panhandler says i can stay with him we can snuggle again Again. Again. Night <laughs> or tomorrow morning, your dad says blah, 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 and starts with this like entire list of tremendous reasons that don't make sense. Similar to all the rest of them. Every single time I'm at a spot getting comfortable and the person there who owns the place is like, yeah, this will work. It's only a matter of four or five days before whoever the fuck is stalking me makes it a no. Like, I don't even know how else to describe it. And now listen to this. So I get the job, right? I think I have the living situation at the very least temporarily handled. My grandma's house, first of all, looks like a fucking concierge. It looks like a room service. She's got. What? She thinks a concierge and a room service are the same thing. 
I don't know what a room service looks like. My grandma's house looks like a room service. My grandma's house looks like a concierge. I was like, well, a concierge is a person, and a room service is, I mean, that's not even, you don't say a room service. Hi, could we get a room service? Thank you. Thank you. She's eaten pasted. Can we, we're we're going to have to get an eaten pasted shirt, right? I eaten pasted. Or a shirt that just says eaten pasted. I think that's a great shirt. Eaten pasted. Look, I got to come up with new merch to make up. I was going to get $180,000. Every fucking item organized. Like, who is really staying at my grandma's house? That'll get a nice Lexus. That'll be a nice Lexus. Right? What the fuck is really going on at my grams? And I was so, so now because her grandma won't let her stay there, she's like, my grandma's up to something or someone's wearing her, her skin suit. What's really going on with my grandma? <laughs> we're going to get to the bottom of it. Super suspicious because they were hiring home health nurses and every single home health nurse was an undocumented citizen. And they were going to my Aunt Diane's house and they were going to my Aunt Ruby's house and they were going to my grandma's house. His time by my Aunt Diane. Okay, and my grandma was in good health. Supposedly she had a stroke and didn't want my dad to know what. My dad knows where my grandma is every day. You want me to believe that my grandmother had a stroke. Someone is texting me this to my phone, pretending to be various family members, et cetera, and so forth. This has been my life for the past four years. Com this is another one of those people like comedy shaman and stuff like there may even be something here. Do you know what I mean? Like, maybe somebody's fucking with her or doing something to her. We'll never know because she doesn't know how to communicate. We'll never know because every time she opens her mouth, she sounds like a fucking insane person. Like, what if people are really after her and, like, fucking with her life? I mean, it may be happening. We'll never know because she can't talk. She can't, like, just tell a, a story and stay on a narrative and, like, keep a thread of conversation. And then the, and then they texted my boss and told him that uh, the aliens were in the bake room, but then I had to go to my grandma's house, and she asked me to leave. And they said that she had had a stroke and didn't want my dad to know, but they were texting me from my phone trying to get me to believe, believe some, there were some other family members, and then the, they lost my paperwork, and I shouldn't have been hired. And it's like, I mean, I can't. You're on nine different stories about how the world has rizaped you and we don't know what to even say where to follow paul parady plan handler bing mrs chenandler bong beloved chatter lance told me that heather g is disgracey wouldn't that be wouldn't that be a turn of events can we get a uh, palate cleanser if i do then i will i'll go with I don't know if I feel better about that or worse. It made me ill, a little ill to my stomach to watch it. Um, if I'm going to be honest with you, okay? Uh, Arizona Mesa Tom, I think if she she had government housing and all her bills uh, on bill pay, she would still have major problems and become homeless again. Yeah, I was reading uh, uh, some fucking article about the uh, San Francisco Tenderloin District and all the homeless people down there, and then like three homeless people die every day. In uh, government-assisted, low-income, homeless. Uh, yeah, because it's like, it's, uh, I used to listen to Adam Carolla. He would say this all the time, and it's so true. It's like, we just, like, we assume that the problem with the homeless is they don't have a home. That's their name. They're homeless. They just need a home. They just need a place to live. Build them a home. Give them a home. It's like, that's not how life works. 
these people shit in their hand and they're addicted to drugs. They're mentally ill. They're literally carrying diseases. If you give them a home, they now they'll just sh- they'll still shit in a corner and overdose on meth. Yeah, but they have a home now, so they're not homeless. Yeah, and what? And what? You know. No, they're mentally ill. They're mentally ill. You need to scrape them off the street and incinerate or incentivize immediately. I, I, I. Incinerate or incentivize immediately. If they can't be fixed, they need to be burned up. And if they can be fixed, they need to be motivated and get it done. Incinerate or incentivize immediately. Uh, We don't need any more Heathers just shuffling around for the better part of a decade after a reality show, after countless opportunities. Again, these people have family members and stuff. What's the issue? You have aunts and uncles and grandmas and fathers and children, you know, getting to be adult children, and no one can help you get it together enough to, like, maintain an address, maintain a place to live. It's you. You're broken. You don't fit it. Like, You can either wander out into the feral woods or you can be killed. Those are your two choices. You can't stay on a tent, you know, near the bean. We're not having that. You can wander out into that city where they send all the people who are sensitive to Wi-Fi signals and cell phones. You can wander out there and be off the grid and join a commune where you pick berries and scream about being raped all day. That's fine. No one cares. You and the Charmin Bears, just live it up. If you want to stay here, you have to get a place to live and a job and pay bills. <laughs> Air TNT. Yeah, it's Air Tent. Uh, th- this whole thing where, where it's just you're in the sidewalk in perpetuity. What are we doing? Enough. Enough. We've got a new one. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a new one here. We got one! This was sent to me uh, by George. This is great. And judging by the account, there's only 3,000 views, so this is not a a big one that other people have gotten turned on to yet, I hope. 60, 61,000 subscribers, so not small. Not small. Most of these tent folks were institutionalized before COVID. They emptied those. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, the problem isn't they need a home. It's so That's so myopic. It's not even worth discussing. Send Xavier and Aunt Ruby the link. Also, let's send Aoi Jane uh, into the tent city to give away soap and tempt Xavier with her gapped slot. Did Aoi Jane just vanish? You know, I never see her in the chat anymore. I don't think she's watching. I don't think she's... She just left this... Her and Drunk on Cringe just joined hands and walked into the Dabbleverse. Hello, Humblebrug. Have you heard of Balin Dupree? I haven't. I haven't. She apparently has Tourette's Syndrome, which is hilarious. And I guess she does stuff with her Tourette's. And as you can imagine, hilarity follows. Um, hold on. People are saying, hi, Ari Jane. Is she here? I don't think she's here. The point is, we're going to watch this uh, Balin Dupree chick. And what a great one to start with. It's called Making Smash Burgers. Um, with Tourette's syndrome. Now, the question is, is this chick acting? Or is she not acting? That's what people are trying to figure out. I've watched, uh, hold on. People are saying, uh, Carl covers this. I didn't know. I didn't know. And I can't, you know, I've never seen Carl cover this. And I watch a lot of the videos. And by the way, Carl took our blonde cast, so it's not even really uh, a big deal. But 
I've never seen this chick. I've never heard of her. And I don't really give a fuck if Carl covers her because everyone steals my people. But I got sent this organically by George, who's usually in the chat, and he can back it up. So I didn't steal this from Carl. I don't want to get letters from Carl. I haven't even watched it yet, so I can't even imagine. But also, if you're the kind of guy who, who thinks that uh, two people can't cover something on the Internet, then, you know, Carl covers her in jizz. <laughs> Hold on, does he watch her all the time, or he just watched her once? That's the thing. That's the answer I can never get out of people. Um, you know. Imagine then coming in and super chatting it five minutes after. We've, we've been discussing it, Trucker Chrissy. Trucker Chrissy pops up now. Like, Carl just, Carl did this. Like, yeah, we've been, we've been talking about that for four minutes here, Chrissy. Thanks. Thanks. And you women want to get paid the same as men. And you women want to get paid the same as men. Okay, hold on. They're saying he does it weekly. All right, so maybe we'll never do it again. Maybe we'll never do it again. I got to watch it because it got me. I watched four minutes of it, and I was like, this is too much. It's too much. But a lot of our people don't watch Carl, and I and I have ne I don't watch. Uh, they're saying he doesn't on who are these socials, but I don't watch that stuff. Carl is cringe. I don't watch Carl. George knew that uh, Carl covered her regularly. Why I oughta? I don't think he did. He covers her every week. She's a regular on who are these socials. All right. They cover her every day. Is that real? I've never heard of her. I, I've genuinely never heard of her. Uh, move on. You'll get busted for being a hack again. Thanks for worrying about me, Chad. Thanks for worrying about me, Chad. Well, look, I'll uh, I'll issue a preemptive apology to Carl. You know, we're not trying to move in on to Carl's stuff. But I also know Carl likes to do things real quick. We'll take hours with this. We'll ruin it. And it's only a four and a half minute video anyway. She's making smash burgers. She's making smash burgers and she's got Tourette's. But is she faking it? That's what we want to know. And we'll do it once. We'll do it today. And we'll take her off of our uh, catalog our, on offer. Because the last thing I want to do is get mixed up with Carl. I'm already, I've already got stuttering John uh, mad at me. I'll get Carl mad at me, and then that Vinny guy will be mad. Did you see Vinny yell at that other fat fuck the other day, that mustachioed karate guy? What's his name? <laughs> anyway, we're going to do great. This is her, and this is making smash burgers with Tourette syndrome. Let's see. I've watched 30 seconds of this, and I knew it was good enough to watch. And maybe that's why Carl discovered her. Here we go. Hi, everyone. <laughs> hey, motherfuckers. Let's fuck your mom. Let's make smash burgers. <laughs> Fist bump. I wonder if, um, just right off the bat here, thinking about monetization on YouTube, do you think, <laughs> do you think she, like, do, Tourette's people get leeway when it comes to cursing in the first eight seconds or 15 seconds or whatever. People are already saying she's a phony. Yeah, this is interesting to me. Because as interesting as Tourette's is and as funny as it is, faking Tourette's. Um, wow, you know. I always thought about it like uh, like uh, people who go to church and speak tongues. You know, if you don't know, you like get, I guess, like awoken by the Lord and you start like speaking tongues, which is basically just like gobbledygook nonsense. Like it's literally just like blah, 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 blah. people do it like, oh, like and they cut in and, and back and forth between um 
English and tongues. And it's supposed to be like this, you know, godly language that nobody really can interpret. And I always thought, like, what if you got caught faking that? Because, like, if I was faking tongues, I'd be like, you know, it's like, what the fuck? And they always go, in Jesus' name, it's like, okay. There are some things I don't like in life, and deciding to touch meat. It's almost like she had an imaginary cock in her hand when she did that. Like in life, and deciding to touch meat. See? Fame, I want to live forever. But yeah, there's something about she's so um, intentional and deliberate with her movements and everything when she's not spazzing. I'm not sure. With with my hands is one of them. How old is she supposed to be? Are we allowed to be wanting to bang her yet? Or, or has she got years to grow and things to know? A reading rainbow. Uh, so we're just going to plop that in there. Some people are saying she's real and that it's just exaggerated. I can't tell. Um, Dildo head ass. We're going to go in with some... Dildo head ass. Garlic and onion seasoning. We're just gonna onion. Hello. Somebody said she's twenty three. Somebody said nineteen. Somebody said old enough. Okay. Dump that in, and then we're gonna put some little baby weenus bacon asshole. Put some bacon salt in there. Um. Yeah. Just the fuck. Run it up. Get up your own wiener. Head ass. I'm a, I'm gonna say not completely fake. I'll I, I'm gonna say not completely fake. It's pretty good. It smells good. Um, I'm gonna put some salt. You're done. You're done. You're hold on. What is she saying? She's saying you're dumb or you're done. You're done. You're done. I want that as a meme clip. You're done. You're done. She was on Dr. Phil. We're going to put some pepper and then we're going to go fuck your mom. Hey, welcome back, <laughs> back to my YouTube channel. To be talked about when you're cat or tisserie chicken. I forgot. Ooh, no. See, I mean. You can't, uh, no, this is real Tourette's. This isn't fake, uh, autism like Gracie's kid. Disgracie, this is a real. Tap the wiener, tap the rotisserie chicken. <laughs> tap your wiener, tap the rotisserie chicken. This is my password. Pepper, and then we're going to go fuck your mom. Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel. We're gonna go fuck your mom. Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel. <laughs> what the fuck? She drives a car. How can you drive if you're this spastic? And also, yeah, when she's shaking the ingredients in, she never like has a thing and throws it. I forgot the amazing burger one, so we're gonna make sure we put a lot of that one in there. Got to be really seasoned before I actually touch this. Um, maybe I can just chomp it up a little bit first. I don't know if any of you guys have ever made smash burgers before. You're done. You're done. You're done. You're done. I need that. That needs to be in my. You're done. You're done. <laughs> that should that should be a steel toe clip. When they don't reach the goal, you're done. You're done. But this is my first time ever making one. So if I'm doing it wrong, just know that I fucked your dad. You are not the father. 
What? No, no, no. I fucked your dad. You are not the father. Wow. Wow. Everyone wants to know her OnlyFans. Now, I want to ignore the, the main issue in the room here. Is she's put in a lot of stuff for Smash Burgers. Uh, Smash Burgers should be ground beef and salt and pepper. You season the burger. You don't. You're making, this is borderline meatloaf. You should put in breadcrumbs and nine things of seasoning in it. Why don't you crack an egg and put some cornmeal in here? So no, I'm just trying my best. Um, people ask me, how do I cook? How do I fuck your dad? <laughs> how do you fuck my dad? He's been dead for a while and he's cremated. You're getting ashes. You dipping your pussy in his ashes, and they just get stuck to your labia, like, like you're making hand turkeys in kindergarten for Thanksgiving. You just stamp that onto some construction paper. So how does this? Go, how does this? And I use a electric skillet. I can show you in a second. There's a lot of avenues I take to fuck your dad. <laughs> Deuces. Wow. I like him. I like him. You 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 think this is fake? She can't be faking all that. It's too good. It's too good. She cannot be faking this completely. Uh $85 left on steel toe. Good to know. Mikasa Sukasa, bitch. Is obviously Mikasa Sukasa, bitch. You're done. You're done. Hand You're done is great. Handful of bullshit. You're lazy. Um, but yes, um, yes. You are not the father. Up top, Girl Scout. <laughs> okay. So she does have some tech she repeats. This is typical of Tourette's. People, I, I, not completely fake. This can't be completely fake. They got a lot of people like serial killer and stuff in their chats. Like this is completely fake, hundred percent fake. It's like it may be exaggerated. It's hard to tell. It's hard to ever really know that because if you've ever had a friend with Tourette's, like it all seems fake and unrealistic anyway. It really does. Like I've, I've had good friends with Tourette's, and it's just like. I mean, it's comical. You're, you're going like, shut the fuck. Really? You can't stop doing that? So it all, if, you, if you've never really had experience with it, you, it, you think it's super fake. But it's hard to tell if someone's overreacting or not, you know? Blo Beloved Chatter says, fake or real, I'm getting blood flow. Um, I don't like the name Mike. So I'm gonna just gonna be using a plate to put the meat on here to then put onto the skillet, so it's a little bit easier. Again, I feel like she's putting that on a tortilla. What is she? What is that? Look at this. Um. Yeah, like, look down here at the bottom. She's like, I'm just going to put the meat on a plate. But this is the plate. This is like a tortilla. You don't make smash burgers by putting meat on a tortilla. You see that, right? Like, there's something on the plate. Very weird. We're coming for you. And on my end, because I think that's what you're supposed to do from the TikTok video I watch. Listen, this is all from a TikTok video. This is inspired by a TikTok video. She has tor Tourette's Tia. Tortilla Rat. Yeah, I got Tourette's scumbag. So, I don't even know how much meat you're supposed to use. 
I don't know if I'm supposed to, you know, even this up. I got no idea. Sometimes when I'm out of paper towels, I use tortilla also. What? This is weird. I got no idea. Um, because I've never made these again. This off a TikTok video, okay? Hey, motherfuckers! Sorry, Fluffy. Oh, no. You're gonna like the way you look. Um, my hair's all over the place. Whoa. So, I don't know if it's supposed to go this way or this way. Oof. Yeah, why is it on a tortilla? I'm lost. Anybody else make smash burgers and use flour tortillas for something? Also, is your smash burger a, as big around as a plate? These are burgers, supposedly. So from what I think I know, you just, I don't know if you, I think you're supposed to do this side first. Let's put this one. On. It is on a tortilla. Like, what the fuck? A giant plate-sized flat smear of meat on a tortilla. And then go to the next one. They're sizzling. Um, I don't know if you're supposed to do the front side or the back side first. Um, you are I, not. I'm lost. I am lost. Uh, yeah, a smash burger. You you take a ball of meat. You know, you know, somewhere between a golf ball and a tennis ball, ball of meat. You put it on a flat top griddle and you smash it. That's a smash burger. Salt and pepper. She's mixed in all this shit, patted them out to a 15-inch rim size on a tortilla, and calls it a smash burger. I mean, I'm, I'm actually lost. The father. Spread your own wiener, bitch. Alive. 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 Yeah, you're done. You're done. You're I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I do. Yeah, I don't understand the tortilla part. I'm real lost. It's not even a good crust for a burger. I mean, this is. I do not think that that's supposed to look like that. You are not the father. So, wow. Wow. And then this is the uh, thumbnail for today's WATP. Or, sorry, uh. Should we report stuttering John or not? Ha 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 ha. We don't know. We could make him go away forever. Who knows? Check it out on today's Uncle Rico. Missed it on today's Uncle Rico? Catch it on today's BS show. The same thing. Missed today's BS show? It'll be on Uncle Rico this afternoon. Miss Uncle Rico this afternoon? Don't worry. We got our replayables tonight where we'll be, uh, where we'll be going over all the things. Oh, boy, we got a fake, uh, who are these podcasts? Who's going to start some shit? There's, like, do you, I'm not Ray, so I don't get upset at your fake uh, outrage in my chat. Um, WATP, why don't you go after your own material instead of hacking for me yet again? I didn't say anything the first time. This time, I'm calling you out. We'll look forward to it. We're really, really worried <laughs> over here. Uh, we really think that's really Carl. And we're really, really concerned over here. On White the team. people are fucked up. Mine yacht, my niece Apollonia starting chanting foul devil statements after church one day. She was making grits and started saying, Smash my ebony beaver. If Jesus. you ever saw a black horror movie, you know they last five minutes.
Father Leroy staked her ass with a Popeye's knife. If you need space to throw her out, I can move over in my RC Cola box. It would be nice to have a friend since I never did in life. And this closet really smells. Jesus Christ. My niece Apollonia? My niece Apollonia. Uh, Melton should turn around and say, yeah, I took it. Now what? I mean, first of all, it's not Carl. I don't, you know. If, if, if Carl doesn't get mad at uh, Shuli for pretty much snaking the whole stuttering John stuff, I doubt, you know. Um, He'll get mad that I covered a Tourette's girl one time. But I don't know what's going on with that Tourette's girl. They got $70 left over on Steel Toe today. And I don't know if they're going to do it or not. I don't really care. Um, we'll probably save this to find out tomorrow if they if they hit their goal. But I see I see 70 to go. I can't imagine that. I really I can't. It's so depressing to think about whether or not Steel Toe is going to catch catch her $70 or not. But Chandler said he was taking a break. So I don't think Chandler's going to run over there and help him much. Um, who knows? Pulper just gifted a membership, so we're doing great. Uh, ooh. Melton Meek, uh, Melton's meat antics are sick. Wasn't Apollonia Prince's wife? Too soon, man. Too soon. Um, yeah. Mystery donation on PayPal coming. Oof. I do believe that. Probably, probably true. Why wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't it be? Um, tomorrow we're going to do uh tra I'm going to get out of here. We're just going to get out of here a little early. We're going to do the opposite of overtime. We hit the goal so early. We do the opposite of overtime over here, but also, you know, it, def it deflated me a bit when you guys told me that I stole this from Carl. This has wrecked my day and I'm going to have to get with my legal team and we're going to have to figure out an answer to this because we're going to go swinging back and. I actually like laughing at her so much. We may send a cease and desist to um, Carl to stop doing it. So Carl, what's her name? I don't even remember what her name is. Tourette's girl. What's her name? What's her name? Fuck. I, I already forgot. Anyway, stop doing her. It's mine. It's our property. And we'll fuck you up. We'll fuck you up. Yeah, tomorrow's training Tuesday. It's a good one. It's a good one for tomorrow. And uh, also we have an extended Bauer uh, watch session tomorrow, along with some other goodies and my usual spazzing out on a, uh, on a, oh, Balin Dupree. Sorry, yeah, Balin Dupree. So get this over to Carl. Hey, Carl, Balin Dupree's mine now. Okay, buddy? Balin Dupree is mine. Stop jerking off to her. Stop watching her videos. I'm jerking. I'm watching. She belongs to NLO now. If you don't like it, join the overdose and buy something from our store, you old savage cuck. Your manner is most unbecoming of a gentleman. Would you be high on cigarettes? I don't know if the comedy hasn't hit them yet. They're full-blown retarded or just high on cigarettes. The question posed to stupid hoes who don't get it yet Excuse me, miss, are you high on cigarettes? I don't know if the comedy hasn't hit them yet They're full-blown retarded or just high on cigarettes All the laughter that you deploy if you listen to the show Boy, Patrick Melton, Melton faces have you stacking And the low point is the low point, not the reason The reason is fucking gold to make the taco pony party be a part of your soul To make you vandalize a van with a pedal sticker So both the family probably get arrested before they get down the